going out and hanging out, chasing, drinking, getting high, hanging out with friends, chasing women and everything. And, and then March 5th is my birthday. And so I have one big party, hang out, have fun. And then that's it. I'm starting back training. You know, and, and then I didn't do anything. I was just training football. And I would do this every, every year. And, and, and this year, on that birthday party, so we go to a hotel room. I got some girls, and, and we have drugs and everything. And we're in there, and the police came in, and, and they, found, they found us in there, found the girls, and they found drugs, and, and yeah. And that's why you're... Email is jkemp88. That's exactly right. You're like, wait. Drugs, girls. And getting ready when it's time to perform. Super Bowl rings, yeah. Celebrate your birthday. You always take your birthday off. Yeah, of course. You share a fifth. Is is your birthday the fifth? It's very kind of you. Is that weird of me to know that? It's a little weird. Is it gay? Or is it just two men we having a other. very strong platonic relationship? That's right. But no, I mean it was a very uh it was a very compelling story to me as a child that the playmaker would just absolutely go as hard as you could possibly go for like one month. And then everybody who ever talked about him, Troy in particular, was like, Yeah, but when it was time to go to work he showed up and brought it. <clears throat> I was like, man. He truly. Like, <laughs> that's like the coolest story ever. I, I don't want to like face a, this a way. Robot. We're doing a video today, and this is a big crowd oh, you shot. Don't want, you don't want your junk out there? It just feels like the camera is pointed a lot lower than it usually is. What, don't pander we... to the camera. Okay, I'm just saying. Maybe the audience wants to see it. Yeah, yeah a little package shot. That's Vi- for the OnlyFans. Video guy wants to see it. Heck yeah. When I was in Dayton, though, I remember... They, uh, the, <laughs> the GM always said, hey, you know, when we first met and everything, get hired. And me and my buddy Joe were hired together. And uh, she said, you know, we, we have a lot of, we, we work, we have fun here. But, I mean, we work hard and we play hard. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh. Nice. Okay. I like both those things. And so what she meant apparently was they would get together like once a week, like Thursday after work or something and they would all have like a beer maybe two and that was their playing hard right and like we were going home you're ripping lines in the bathroom we're smoking pot every day (laughs) we're like staggering in hung over every morning and uh like these people yeah so but michael irvin i never worked or played as hard as he had like he truly lived that no that's but you can aspire to it i don't think there's a dayton story i don't like there's really not. Anytime he brings up writing his little diary because he got mad at one of his program directors. Yeah, or anytime he has to apologize to a... To the Trimble Tomcats. And I know it's not all Dayton, but whatever. Let us let us just use a catch-all for Ohio. Yeah, are you token up before the show at 5 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. It seems awesome. Are you having to sell ads? <laughs> Wear a suit. In an oversized suit. <laughs> Sit in a parking lot and just kind of write down that I went in. Yeah. But I would yeah. never really go pitch them. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was, knows that about sales calls. Uh, was called in because of a uh, – was it – was Dayton the – oh, a little too much Hitler. Yeah. Humor. Right. Calling uh, Neil Diamond the Jewish Elvis. I had to publicly apologize for that. That's mm-hmm. right. I'm like, that's what they call him. Trust me. I've been through that's what they call him before. Like and Publicly. That's what others have said. Yeah. And that was You're the, allowed to say the word Jewish. That was the Air Force One era. Mm-hmm. All right, we've just taken uh, the dog. So we're broadcasting live high atop my garage today. Today, as Michael Irvin would tell you, it's his birthday. It's March 5th. And, and he's back, by the way. Oh, back on the NFL Network? What? I don't know if we talked about that during Super Bowl week or not, but that was not to send us down another side road, but that was kind of hilarious. They decided to reprimand him where they're like, you're not on during the off season or most of the season. And then he was just back. Like, they didn't fire him. You Nothing know? really happened? Did, I, it did doesn't the lawsuit like it, get dropped or was it a lawsuit? I don't even remember. I, I, you know, I don't know if it got settled or what, but it, he's back. 
Well, good. He's that guy rebounds from everything. Everything. He was caught literally naked <laughs> with a crack holding pipe. a joint. No, he was caught with a crack pipe in his car yeah, when he car. got pulled over. But it was from a friend, <laughs> the friend who was... he was talking off of drugs. That's right. Blake, just grab that. I, I, dog, I man. tried, it's and fine, I. It's fine. Okay, so or he doesn't seem to mind. I guess. Uh, no, Warren minds. So <laughs> he, he does seem like he minds. We have yeah. a 690 sit-in today. We're also going to be on video at some point, but um, so you can go to our YouTube page and see that oh, at www.youtube.com mm-hmm. slash at the dumb zone or just at the dumb zone. Is there a slash? Yeah. Okay. Go to YouTube and search dumb zone. It's everyone knows. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just say our YouTube page. That's all I have to do. Yeah, pretty much. If you search Dan and Jake, will you find us? Do you keyword the videos, or what do you do there? Like, go to YouTube and search Dan and Jake? Yeah. No, I think you got to search the Dumb Zone. Mm. Let's see where Dan and Jake takes us. I, I think need, there's a, need a country, oh, look at this. country band. Okay, I stand corrected. You get it? If us? you search Dan and Jake, yeah, your ticket goodbye is one of the first videos. What if you search Blake Jones? Nothing. Anyway, it's a, a 690 sit-in day, and uh, we applaud Warren, who yeah! is... Do you have a last name? Sibley. Sibley? Well, I don't care. Yeah, you don't care. Um, <laughs> Warren's in pretty good shape, but he kind of looks like if John Cena stopped taking steroids. <laughs> he looks like John Cena, but he also looks like he could handle a business meeting on you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's oh, yeah. no doubt. No, I mean, he's... I feel like he could foreclose my house. Yeah, I think he could have a business meeting while shooting a 73. Uh, yes. Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> I think perhaps while you're sitting in today, there might be some business texts. It feels like you're kind of monitoring the phone, just uh, staying on top of things, sell, buy. And and, and Philip is my, my business partner. Okay. Now, Philip looks more like a uh, – and we have, we welcome Philip. Who's Philip? Another Philip. Yeah. Um, he looks a lot more cash. Yeah. Dress, uh, yeah, dress the environment. Yeah. yeah. And then who's Whoa. the guy in the back? We have uh, no idea. Okay. Uh, Ashley, yeah. the male Ashley. Mm-hmm. So if you're thinking Ashley's hot, you're correct. <laughs> and he apparently didn't get any applause because Dan thinks his name is effeminate. Oh, okay, there you go. No, no, I love feminine names. Ashley can be whoever he wants here. That bathroom is for anybody. <laughs> uh, but it is a closed-door policy now. Uh, the dog is on Warren, as yes. will happen to whoever sits on the couch. I knew I'd seen Warren before, and uh, he pointed out we had, we've we actually had a a festival journey together before. Oh, really? We did. Yeah, when I fell out of a, a porta potty uh, We have a microphone problem there, yeah, Blake. Yeah, just raise that up a little bit. There you yeah. go. How about that? Does that work? Yep. You know how they have those like really nice ones now, like at golf tournaments. What? Porta potties. Oh yeah. yeah. I wouldn't even really call them a porta potty. Like right? the ones at Cowboy Camp. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are harder to step out of than the regular porta potty. Did you topple? Oh, big Oof. time. <laughs> <laughs> Lots big of time. blood. Was this the day Lots you peed yourself? Blood. 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 Oh yeah, dude. My shin just hit Ripped like one of the. You know, those are like metal mm-hmm. stairs that you're and there's three or four of them did you even feel it no no <laughs> <laughs> but or, everyone around us did or i answered that for him yes yeah. yeah okay well thanks for uh and if you have the if you want to do the 690 sit-in it does seem more economically feasible if you do have a couple of friends you can sure. kind of mm-hmm. kind of split it that's a businessman right there that's right yeah it was it was philip's idea Oh, okay. Everybody's <laughs> passing the buck on that. Yeah, Great yeah. idea. Um, you guys also brought four pizzas. How That's much right. do you think we're going to eat? I had one piece. Have I think Blake them? snuck one. Jake won't eat in front of people. I'll eat on the way home, though. Um, but no nobody's eating that. them while they're hot. You know? And you brought wine? For y'all, not for now. Unless you want it now. Okay. No, I, I think I'm going to hold off for I'm now. Good for now. It. Yeah. And then uh, I think Philip also brought something else. Do you want to present that now, or do you want to wait till closing remarks? You, you, you tell me. It's, uh, I'm, I'm ready now. Well, let's see. We actually have a video today, so okay. we'll pull that up. So Whoa. I uh, actually I set aside 
is for you, Jake, but it is actually for your mom. Okay. Okay, this is for... But, um, there you go. A present okay. for Jake's mom. Yes. Okay. Okay, this is the Jesus Storybook <laughs> Bible. Every story whispers his name. It is a book. Yeah. yeah it's a book. It is a book. You, well, remember you had mentioned how, you know, some of your kids being indoctrinated and how comfortable you are with that. And I think you'd mentioned, you know, they get that the most when they go over to the... Okay, what else it's, we got in that bag? It's actually <laughs> way more, uh, <laughs> no, no, just to be clear, a, more mother-in-law <laughs> than mom. But also, I all right. Do we have, have a, a hand. A new, koozies. A Looks like koozies. Who can't use nice. one of these? Oh yeah, yeah. And got it's here. Got a magnet for when you guys go play wow. Ball. I will say this yeah. though. Yeah. If this you want to pass great. this down to Dan, that is way more. Uh, oh, the what magnet. You would ha- what you would idea. think that Jesus looks like. <laughs> uh yeah yeah kind of more of a caramel skin, more than uh, just the whitest guy you've ever seen. Right. He does not have blonde hair, blue eyes. That's okay. correct. Okay. Yeah, let's show the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the uh, the Jesus book and the looks like that's your business. Yeah, because it's one of your names at least, or both of them. It's both, yeah. Dan. Oh, okay. Tilger Sibley. So Tilger, the guy that gets to dress however he wants. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Sibley name. is the guy that you will bring home to mom. <laughs> <laughs> the Tig Tilger Sibley Real Estate Group. See any good studio spaces available? Oh. Mm. Let us let us know. Let us know. Well, thanks. Thanks, Tilger Sibley. Thanks for being here as well. Um, I have some of this. Just real quick. Hey, everybody. It's time to answer some of today's viewer mail. Since we're doing video and since we are here in the den, I think this is our last den show for a while. Until I'm in France and you guys will just be here without me. Correct. You feel like everything's locked down? What do you mean? Oh, for the France trip? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. No, there if was a lot never, of scrambling. You've never been abroad. I have. Uh, I'm almost all packed. Okay, I would imagine. Because I'm I surprised pack, that you're not, you know, fully there yet. I pack a week ahead of time. Mm-hmm. My wife packs the night before, which I can't stand that. I know. I'm the same way. It's just she's so. I do it too. Like, but he, she lives her life frenetically. Last minute, like. Do something ahead of time. You will not, you will not, and it was this week, it was this weekend, it was all like uh, trying to figure out Amsterdam. And so just searching this and trains and this and restaurants and I don't know. Well, that's a little bit ahead of time. Yeah, but apparently somebody told her you must reserve these things a week in advance. So it was a day ahead of time. Are you like nervous at all? Um, it's looming and I'm starting, I'm thinking more about, I'm just really worried about the jet lag because I am not, I am <laughs> physically, I am, uh, inept. I Breaking am, down. Oh my gosh. And so I'm just wondering how that will affect me. I hope I can just kind of power through it because that's what everybody says, oh, power through it. It's not that easy for me. I'm soft. Anyway, I got actual real mail. I told you guys yesterday we got some, uh, somebody mailed us some eclipse glasses. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. Getting prepared for that. Also, people have been emailing or uh, texting, if I know them, different locations. They're imploring us to go to, hey, come out to my place in Dallas, or hey, come out to wherever. And I just kind of think, it feels like it's going, we're going to be fighting big crowds no matter where we go, unless... We go nowhere. <laughs> we stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think that's probably the move. So, like, just set up the broadcast outside. Yeah. Maybe we can invite some people here. Wouldn't that be better than going somewhere? But but some downtown places, downtown Dallas, some Dude, I high bet rises. Dude, I bet you even, like, downtown Grapevine. No, but I'm saying, oh, yeah. Like, every single yeah. little gathering area you can think of there are going to be a ton of people there and the thoroughfares in and out of there will also be uh, attentively clogged we're thinking of like other cities where it's going to be more the path of totality will like be four minutes and I think you're more thinking of that but yeah anyway Uh, got a uh, an email I was kind of wondering what like my kids school will do about it 
Like, you know, we talked yesterday. They like, got to go outside. I would think it's so. It's like a once in a lifetime type thing. All the kids are just going to look straight up at it, though. Yeah. And like, how do you stop that? And then like, how do you even explain it to them? Well, pretty easy. You say the sun is really far away. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, you know, you do like the, <laughs> you pointed out yesterday, like my daughter will ask like really logical questions. Yeah. When the time changes and we get up in the morning and it's still dark, she's like, is it nighttime? Uh and vice versa, right? Well, like I don't nighttime, know how to explain the time change. I know, that but like at nighttime sense. when it's light, she's like, is it daytime? Yeah. So how are they going to explain to them that for three minutes <laughs> during the daytime it's dark? Yeah. And have them actually understand any of that? They won't. I got an email. Remember last week somebody sent a big, it's like a uh, blow up and it's like a bread pillow. And I'm like, why do I have a bread pillow? Oh, yeah. Got an email that says it's a French baguette, which goes with something else this person sent, which is a beret. Oh, fantastic. I would really love for you to wear that around. Kind of a Monica Lewinsky beret. Well... (laughs) And um, Parisian. It has some. It says something on it. Oh wow! Look at that. Wow. It's got a, a no puppet insignia. A no puppet beret. <laughs> I don't know if I can wear this now. <clears throat> the headphones will smush it. But. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Does that look good? Yeah, you gotta flash the no puppet. <laughs> Does it look good? Yes, it looks yes. awesome. <laughs> it matches my fit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Dang. no, that's really good. I wish you would have had that yesterday for a business meeting. He's using fit now. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> that's right, bro. I know what all the kids are doing, Blake. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to mess with me. I have one from Anna Kay. Okay. Mm. Big fan of the show. Uh, because yesterday you were talking about how uh, it was your opinion that Sydney Sweeney is only popular because... Uh, dudes love looking at her her boobs. Sure. And uh, my point was that I think a lot of women uh, flexing is for other women. And Anna says, I saw a tweet recently that talked about if there were no men in this world, women would dress a lot sluttier. Hmm. That they're actually, I mean, a lot of women will support you on the idea that they actually just kind of like, showing off for each other it's not just for you and your male gaze okay well that's disappointing although I guess you know so the, that's why I'm a creep because I shouldn't be looking because it's for, it's not for you it's, it's for, for your for you. wife that's so, for your wife to look at me and feel jealous that she's not this hot okay well I mean put it this way like whenever you lost a bunch of weight did you not ever feel like whenever you would run into a dude like kind of proud when you'd see him and he would be all like fat. Well, I got to tell you. And you'd be like, oh, look at me. I, I actually. I feel like at the gym, I'm more of a creep with dudes. Yeah. Oh, man, that guy looks pretty good. Look wonder at those what, calves. Yeah, I wonder what he. Uh, what's he taking? Yeah, what's what exercises is he doing to get that way? Or if I do see a dude that's lost weight, I'm like, oh, man, how do you do that? Exactly. I'm very interested. Exactly. Um, so I got this mail mail, a giant box. And he says, I'm not sure if Jake's affinity for eating in the car is now owned by a radio station, but except these three custom car trays I made featuring 1991 upper deck basketball cards. Wow. What? So, dude, what this the is a heck? Mavericks one for Jake. That is incredible. He has a, this is a Cavalier. This uh, is the most amazing tray. thing I've ever seen in my life. Let's focus this camera in and off my wiener. <laughs> Can we do that? And, uh, yes, and he got an all-star game one for Blake. So, yeah. Kinda, wow. It kind of looks like... Eat. I don't even want to eat on this, you know? You remember the... Did you ever go eat at Fuddruckers with all the stuff on, on the We know laminated? your affinity for Fuddruckers, yes. But just reading all the Calvin and Hobbeses or uh, whatever? I mean, these smell great, too. It does smell like it's fresh. There's a Roe Blackman card and a Derek Carp, uh, Harper card just embedded in that card tray. Will you use that? I almost don't want to, right? Like, it's if somebody gives yeah, you, you a game worn jersey. You have to. He said, P.S. These card trays are super easy to make. I could do some with the DZ logo if you'd like, or a giveaway, or something with Grapevine Prosper Ford. Let me know 
if you want more, if you think you could sell these things to help knock down those lawyer bills. This is from Stu Hill. Day two, number 691. Oh, so close. He said they're perfect to uh, hold food from Eatsies as well. Incredible. Just incredible. Uh, in exchange for these car trays, could I get one of the following two things? Mm-hmm. Anything you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said, can you help me get a job and shout out my portfolio on the pod? Former creative director, term marketing director, 10 years of experience, ton of... Uh, the company I went work for went out of business. Um, stewhill.work. Are we oh. allowed to say that? Sure. What's well, you were sec- the one that said no. Well, what's the second no, I thing? said yes. The What's second one is, can I have an invite to the next watch party in the den? Want to give him that one instead? That'd be a lot easier. Okay, so strike that stewhill.work. <laughs> We're not going to say that. No. But we will invite Come Stew over Hill. For March Madness or something. To the den. Are we going to do a March Madness thing in the den? I would like to. That's, oh, yeah. that's it. Stew Hill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, you get both. And a couple of uh, viewer mail birthdays. I have, uh, my name is Jacob. Um, I'm interested in some of this stuff up here. <laughs> he says, I subscribed to the Dumb Zone on September 11th, day never, 49. Never forget. I've never smoked a cigarette with Jake, but one time I paid TC to drive me from Love Field to the uh, Alamo Draft House uh, for Bad Radio Episode 5000. I am 29. That's Jacob Hunter. We have D2, number 654. My friend Taylor, D14, number 4011. Uh, Taylor's birthday. Leaders are Dan's superior backing in skills and Jake's bougie-ass cat. <laughs> I did not wake him up I in mean, a I, special yeah. way with a bro job. <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> I mean, I... Guys are... I, I, Waking each I, other up. <laughs> I can guess, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if I want to hang out with uh, with John in Dallas. Well, maybe I do. I don't know. I would know. say you do, yeah. I'll think about this. He says, uh, please, more Blake lore. I don't know what that means. All well, right. you look really nice today, Blake. Thank you. I Why? have a speaking engagement later today. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. Oh. Just going to talk to the youth at the University of North Texas. Got the flying worm today. And uh, going to mold the youth. The What's uni- a flying worm? This was their logo back in the 60s and 70s. Really? It's supposed to be an eagle, but it actually just looks like a worm with feathers. So they call it the flying worm. So are you going to tell them about how important it is to get a degree? Nope. I'm going to leave that out. <laughs> I was a student here just I like you for three months. For a semester. <laughs> Who are you speaking with? Uh, like a media arts class. But I mean, are there any other? Or are you just the, the solo on the bill? I'm just going to carry it myself. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't need anybody. Fantastic. Then we like the following speaker needs no introduction and then he just walks out and everybody's like whoa is this the first time that you're going to speak since we had to change our name yes and i did think about that this morning how do i introduce myself so when you were like it's, with the hang zone that sounds cool uh i would just say the ticket uh that sounds way cooler it does <laughs> <laughs> it does because then it's like oh i've heard of that yeah yeah my dad, my dad used to listen. Yes, that's what I would hear in every yeah, college right. class. I heard it in the car. Yeah, now they're like, uh, I do a podcast. It's only available on Patreon called the Dumb Zone. They're like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about leading off with the whole TCU football thing. TCU Argyle that might help a little bit. Yeah. And hi, dummies! Ready to give a business Wednesday birthday shout out because we're not doing a show tomorrow. To the one and only Shane in Colleyville. Um, let's see. For his birthday, he'd like to hear what Blake likes to eat. Don't let the dog eat the napkin. Clark in Portland. That's very open. What do you mean? What I like to eat? I'm just reading. You answer. Um, I think I could have breakfast for every meal. That's a good call. Really? Any sort of eggs, meat combo, hash browns or potatoes. Throw some cheese on it and salsa. Yeah, I could th- I could do that for every meal. I would some agree. sort of breakfast skillet. Pancakes? Ugh. Yeah, I mean I love pancakes. Um, 
Yeah, Ethan backed me up on the peanut butter and uh, or peanut butter waffle. Mm -hmm. You did that too, right? I was a peanut butter and jelly waffle. Yeah, every, that's right. That's every right. Weekend, Jim. Back when I looked up to you. <laughs> That is a funny thing about the uh, the all inclusive resort. I think we talked about this a little bit, but like they're gonna nail breakfast every day. Oh yeah, but past that, yeah, yeah, you're really getting dicey with buffet style food. But breakfast every day, omelet bar, they'll cook it. And I have something to give our guests too. Um, we bagged these up, so <laughs> remember the big giant. I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> what? No, no, go on. The big it's giant bowl idea. of cookies that that. Adam Romo gave us from Eatsy's for my birthday yesterday. Um, there's so many of them. Like when he would give us that and we would have it at the station, it would be in the studio for a month with people eating it. Mm -hmm. And so how does he think I'm going to eat all of these? So last night, me and the wife bagged them up. Wow. Um, with a, a dozen per bag. And in fact, I'll give you guys each a bag. But with then we had a little argument. Because she said she wanted to put them all in the fridge. Mm. And I said, but then they'll kind of, once they they stop being, they'll get melty on you. Like, I wanted to keep them all out. They were always out in the studio, and I would eat one every day for a month. <laughs> yes, you would. Anyway, here, hand this over to Warren. Wow. He gets the first one. What a day. Yeah. There's, so There's a little uh, artwork on there. Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Okay, so here's what we have. We have a guest who's coming up in about... Do you think she'd be good to be bumped a little bit? Um, I or can do you want to get her right at 115? Forward. Or do I mean, you want to do, do like an MBR now? Yeah. Guest and then sports? Sure. Okay. Right, let's do we that. don't really like have that. Uh, that much of a format. But yeah, uh, Blake has a, a business review because we're now business guys. We had a business meeting yesterday. I wore my business jeans. Jake changed into a business shirt. It was amazing the transformation these two mild-mannered uh, <laughs> podcasters can make. So this is um, – apparently businesses do this, and Warren, maybe you could speak on this better than I can. Um, but uh, every month we just kind of check in to see how everyone's doing. And apparently some people call that an MBR. True? Not true? No idea. All right. Well, we I can heard tell about you this, this from one person. <clears throat> My wife might have been one of them. Really? Okay. They at least do it quarterly, where you just have to come in and sit down with... Oh, maybe we should do a quarterly one. Like two or three Instead. of your bosses, and they just kind of go over, how are we doing? Yeah. Okay. And that's also a lot of times where, hmm. this is crazy, sometimes they will give you more money. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you're doing well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not going to happen today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but for, I guess this is the first time we've done this in this new venture. So to just slightly reset a little bit, I keep somewhat broad, generic notes on the show just in case I need to go back and find something. Um, and, you know, I think this started because I was a big fan of bad radio, especially when you guys would do like your quarterback, quarterbacks under 30 segment. And then you would do it, hey, I'm a big fan of this guy. Oh, let's check back in in a couple years. Like, oh, turns out Jake wasn't the Wentz big... Wentz sucked. <laughs> yes, Carson Wentz fan. And I I always thought that was so cool just to go back and hear just who is right and wrong about some things. So when I first started this job, that's kind of what I did, is I just wanted to keep track of things Dan and Jake said so that I could go back and pull them later if needed. Uh, but then the longer I did it for the show, the more patterns I picked up of you guys of just things that you guys would talk about so i've broken them down into different categories that uh, we will check up on here for the month of february and one of the first ones is called bad bits and we only have one bad bit from the month but it is a pretty bad one and i believe this is when dan brought up that jeff perlman promoted his daughter's college radio show yeah that's even worse than the Taking your kid's Girl Scout cookie form or... Oh, it's a lot worse. Muscular dystrophy fun run thing. Hey, so, you know, especially when the boss does it. Okay, hey, well, you... tell me what's what's better or worse. What if you have a daughter that's, like, pretty attractive? 
and you like post a picture of her online. And you're like, check out my 19 year old daughter. Yeah, that's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and you're like a big name. I know who you're talking about. But it's not just him. Multiple people do it. Like, and it feels, I don't know. It's 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 like you're a big name and you are helping her get a following, mm-hmm. but it's usually going to be just a bunch of dudes wanting to rub one out to your daughter. <laughs> so that's weird. I didn't say that, but. I think I th- we were all <laughs> we knew, all knew. Yeah. Uh, but then the radio show thing I thought was very terrible just because, you know, my daughter's in college. She'll get on the radio as well. And I remember me in college. We were talking about this earlier. I, uh, you know, recorded a bunch of stuff on radio and you would never want anyone to hear it. Yeah. Like that's part of it. You're getting your reps. Yeah. You don't want anyone to see and hear that. And but now to send a lot of people and now look, OK. Yes, she has 50 listeners now, whereas usually there's seven. Um, yeah, I would even say that, like, it's e- just, even if it's not the promoting the radio show thing, like, in its infancy, even if they're not hot, I think even, like, promoting your wife's business, if you're, like, a big account, like, yeah. let's say <laughs> me. Sure. Uh, my wife has asked me to tweet about things before to help her out, and I'm like, I'm not doing it. Mm. Yeah. I think I'm with you. Just not going to do it. Like if she was trying to start a little side hustle or, you know, donations for the school or whatever, I'm, I, can, I can't do it. You're just worried about the backlash? <clears throat> yeah. From you. It's hard enough for you to <laughs> promote us. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> like, uncomfortable right. enough. Yeah. And I think that's why I tried to hide Argyle stuff from y'all. Like that's where I go to get better. I don't need you telling me how much I suck over there. We've well, so literally get never done that. All we've yeah, ever because been I've never brought com- it up. I'll just okay. let's keep them separate. All right, th- that's uh, your bad bit for February. Next category are, is things Dan or Jake want. So anytime on the show they say they want something, I try to write it down. This started as maybe I could do some of these things for your birthday or something, but I think this has kind of gone over the top. For instance, on February first, Jake wants a pond. Boy, I still stand by that. This came from when we were in Oklahoma. Yeah. And Carrie had a pond, and it was pretty sweet. Yeah. I feel like you'd have a lot of mosquitoes. There's probably something you could do about that. But I, I don't know. I just feel like... Uh, and then you, you don't go in it. You don't just, go in it. look but at just, it. But, yeah, you just go stare at it. And then you can off yourself into it. You can do what the, one of the proprietors of Augusta National did and kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> February 5th Jake, Jake wants Mark Cuban to stop wearing Mavs football jerseys you're out of luck on that one <laughs> yeah that's that was- marketing that's why we should wear dumb zone jerseys to market but it like I should make- be wearing dumb zone stuff right now so that people will be no like puppet beret on, but it doesn't hey, cool. even make sense tell me any time that you've ever seen the owner of a sports team <laughs> wear a branded jersey for his team from another sport. He's well, Again, he's out there. He's visual. He's a marketer. Like, how weird would it be if you saw Ray Davis wearing a Rangers <laughs> hockey sweater? <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest bit he has, and he had it on the other day. Mm-hmm. He had it. it on Sunday. Yeah, uh, and the And I love the guy, but come on, man. You got to move on from the football jersey, basketball jersey. And the Rangers will do like a Stars night where it's a Rangers jersey and Stars colors, and that's weird. It's weird, and it would be a lot weirder if Chris yeah. Young wore it like <laughs> yeah, right, on the field. In fact, I think we do have some merch coming out that is like a dumb zone Rangers jersey. Yeah, yeah. it's at least like a jersey looking thing right. for sure. But it, that's not weird because we're not a football team. Dumbzone.com. February 13th, Dan wants us to be labeled a comedy podcast. We're working on it. We're getting there. Working on it, we're getting there. This is what we get. Uh, February 21st, Jake wants to appear in a studio audience. That was on the uh, Tales of the Dr. Phil show. Yeah. and I'm I Like mean, you want to be seen on TV or you just want to be in a studio audience? Like you've well, never been in an audience? No, but I mean I... <laughs> I mean, I feel like if I'm there, they're going to show me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what those shows. Did I say this when we were with doing Dr. Phil? Like when I went to Letterman with Donovan. Yeah. Did I say it publicly? Or you I mean, you, you definitely have before. When I yeah. went to Letterman with Donovan. Donovan got a different spot. Donovan, they were like, hey, 
uh, we got a seat. You know, yeah. He, I sat way in the back right. Right. And they put him on the aisle, like four rows up. Uh, I think trying to show that look, we have a diverse crowd. <laughs> yes, we call and this they, the uh, the community college brochure effect. <laughs> they did a similar thing because I was sitting in the way back with TC and Blind Josh and and whoever uh, George. Um, at the Dr. Phil thing, and they came up to us, and they kind of pointed at me and George, but then they were pointing behind us at, like, a uh, Latina lady behind sitting behind us, and they moved her down to the front. And she was just a seat filler for half the show, and then they have a guest up there, and then they bring her over, and now the seat filler goes back to her seat. But. It sounds like what you're saying to me is... If I'm able to get into one of these audiences and I go full blackface. That's all you have to do. Then I'm probably and getting on television. I'm also once again saying the white man can't get anything Nothing. in this day and age. No. <laughs> no, just beaten down. They're taking our seats. <laughs> they took our Dr. Phil seats. <laughs> February 23rd was a twofer. Jake wants to work at a water park. Dan wants to work at an amusement park. Or at least I wanted to. I definitely no longer. wanted to. I'm not sure if I'm... Still want to, but you still want to make cotton candy and hand it out, or um, tell everybody to. Uh, it seems like a cool job. Buckle your seatbelt. As a as a college kid, I thought it would be great. Just go there, you do a lot of effing, <laughs> right? I mean, you definitely like at Disney. Yeah, you meet. Yeah, that was yeah, that's a known thing. You're sleeping with a prince, different princess every night. It's great. Well, I think the thing at Disney is that <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing at Disney is that they have like an international program. Oh, even yeah. better. So there's just like people, you know, come in from around the world that want to work in hospitality uh and they all stay there. You know, there's like a little almost like a little mini Olympic village type you thing. Definitely will never meet again. <laughs> almost it's certainly like not. Spring yeah. break extra spring break. Yeah. I had a friend clean house at that. Yeah? Yeah. It's exactly what you think it is. Do you remember the time when I told you guys about, uh, I think it was Hawaiian Falls? That was the one time where I was like, maybe I don't want to work at a water park, where we were in whatever passes for their lazy river, and they like threw uh, like a, a fake baby in the water. <laughs> oh, for their lifeguard training? Yeah. <laughs> like the lifeguard didn't know it was training? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never heard that. And he, you know, he had to like run and you know spring to action. And then he gets and my it kid is like, looking at it like, what the? F- is that a f-? She was like two and a half. He's like, is that a baby? And that's the probably the moment where I'm like, this doesn't look as chill as I thought it would be. What they should do is take a two and a half year old, give him like a choke him out, mm-hmm. and throw him in there just to, and then got to save her. Right, the stakes are a little higher. All right, just a couple more. Uh, February twenty eighth, Jake wants a vasectomy. Yeah. February twenty ninth. Jake wants to go to a Tony Robbins show, and Jake, we, we might have a hookup. We do now. Yeah. Jake wants to hunt hogs up. from a helicopter. Yeah, no, that stands. That stands, and we we also might have a hookup on that front. Because like that's like a victimless crime. Well, the hog. Yeah, but I mean their their population numbers are out of control. Yeah, that's what you hear. Like the and they'll tear up agriculture. They'll they're a threat to other animals. Like, that's something you can do and not feel bad about, at least for me. So to break up these categories, I'd like to play some audio from the show. Uh, This one is from February 23rd, and I'm not kidding you. I thought about this term all weekend. This show was on a Friday, and I thought about it all weekend. Uh, Naked gay body. (laughs) Okay, so I'm thinking, I I don't know what my next project's going to be on. uh, You know, I have a couple ideas, but... My dad, when he was uh, eight years old, he was in. Uh, so this is Bradley Folsom, who is a professor, and an historian, author, historian, yeah, PhD. Very he's, I think man. our official historian. I want to have that guy on yeah. again. I loved him. He's fun, and he's telling us a story yeah, yeah, about his dad. Indiana. He was playing uh, cowboys and Indians, which is very 1950s thing thing to do. Uh, when him and his buddies. Uh, came across a car with a uh, naked gay body in it, and so uh, okay. See, a lot of people don't describe bodies that way. <laughs> yeah, how can you tell? 
I yeah. mean, that we find out later it was it was naked gay body. So um, rectum was. You find out later he was gay. <laughs> yes. So this is the story. The my naked dad part heard. probably presented itself pretty quickly. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 But and then the later on, like they didn't determine at the time he was a naked gay body. <laughs> the rainbow like, tattoo. Just, in in uh, subsequent information uh, uh, led them to conclude it was gay. So. Um, <laughs> it's because so, um, <laughs> of the cane. Oh no no wait that's blind. Mm-hmm. Yes exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Well the cane was. Okay, boy. And there you go. Well, right. right. Uh, it could pretty good. He could be either. Well, yeah. eight year old in 1950, so I don't even know if they would have parsed it out. Anyway, but can uh, blind people be gay? Two one four seven eight seven. Dumb. Naked gay body. <laughs> <laughs> that threw me, man. <laughs> I really feel like you replayed me. that because no one acknowledged the best line in it was when you started to try to describe how they knew because. The cane. Was you said no. You said rectum, and then I don't know if you're going for stretch marks or what you were going to add to that. But it's okay. I I can fly under the radar. Okay, that's all right. I, I, I tried to work back with the cane. Yeah, going somewhere. Um, it yeah, is very funny. Bradley that, just tried to plow through. Yeah, someone <laughs> that smart could get that mixed up on such a simple term. They found a, a dead person who later turned out to be homosexual. In the event that that's even like a needed detail, right? Or <laughs> like, right? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, I know this. I'll I could spot this anywhere. It's a naked gay body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next category: time capsule. Uh, so these are things that uh, I'll check. You know, maybe they're longer bets or, or claims. Uh, February first, Jake says Texas will go six and six in the SEC next year. Just know that I got that. Got any Texas down. grads in here? No. Okay. February 9th. I think they're going to have a tough time. Well, yeah. Oh, did you see the Arch News? What a <laughs> what a little baby. Yeah, what a bitch. So what? He says he doesn't want to be on the college, the new college football EA Sports game because he wants to focus on football. <laughs> yeah. Do you see, like, the overworked Twitter stuff on that? Uh, I like guess not. But Arch it, discovering he doesn't actually have, have to, to be play in the every game time or? somebody fires <laughs> yeah. up. He's like, yeah. oh, God, another game. <laughs> yeah, like every. <laughs> and what he doesn't understand is he's going to be in the game as soon as someone releases a roster update. It's going to be him. Yeah, and you can and just so do what just, Blake and I did and manually. Yeah, update and it. and someone will do that immediately. So he just opted out of six hundred bucks in a copy of the game. That's all he did. That's what it is. Six hundred bucks. Yeah. If that. That's but what they. Like, you're going to focus on football? like Yeah, that's silly. If you had the number one draft pick this year, you're the Cowboys, and Arch was available, you could just pick Arch. You haven't even seen him play college yet. Would you do it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Over Caleb. Yeah. You have to, dude. Arch? Come on, man. It's a Manning. He's been groomed by them. He's been taught. He knows how to act. He knows how to be. Well, he's clearly focused not. On, he's focused on football. Clearly right. not. What do you mean, no, clearly not? Man, Peyton was on the cover of NFL Fever for years. He gets it. It's Arch new. is just being a little baby. Now, he knows you're not going to celebrate till you get there. That's right. He's not going to buy Louis Vuitton because uh, they're going to play in Las Vegas. That's the culture change I need from the Cowboys. <laughs> right. February 9th, Jake says he'll watch the morning show if we watch Generation Kill. We right. have to That's do that. That's an easy trade, yeah. We have to do that. That could be a good thing I to do. I thought about firing it up last night, but didn't. That, but that I will. Could be a thing I do in France or on the way to France. Yeah, people love that. Yeah. Finally, <laughs> uh, February 23rd. Just watch a show about America invading Iraq. February 23rd. <laughs> Jake claims he cannot be beat at rock, paper, scissors. I would like to offer you another challenger. Is it best of three, five, or what? Best of three. Okay. Are you yeah. down, Philip? Philip says he's pretty good. Well, I, now, you took down Tanner last time, but I yeah. just want to make sure I want you to follow up on your claim <laughs> All right, so that you cannot be beat at rock, paper, scissors. What's your normal move? Is just like a bang, bang, bang? Dun, dun, dun. Okay. You want to count us down? We'll sure. Go. Three, two. No, no, no. Hold on. We'll do it together. All right. We'll count. Wipe that one off. That's what she said. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow. Oh, no. He got beat. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I would never have done that to you, Jake. I mean, I Made feel like the fact it. that I didn't get my first one in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. yeah, changed the home didn't field help. advantage. It's rigged. Um, rigged. But right. he did beat me. A quick check You're on not the... Gonna, I mean, don't look, admit it. Look, 
Never admit defeat. <laughs> I feel like I am at like a 75% clip, though. Wow. We've changed <laughs> changed the claim. <laughs> Coming down. Uh, a brief check of the Kim Spins list. In your pre- Damn it. In your previous life, you were at 445. <sighs> Just an unsustainable pace. In uh, in AT time, <laughs> your new life. It's biblical. <laughs> after t- <laughs> You're already up to 31. Uh, 31 new unique ones. That doesn't feel like that different of a rate, but. Well, I just thought that you might have blown a lot of your load <laughs> at the previous place, and you may not have room for more, but you do. So just a brief run through some of these. Uh, Bobby Brown. I mean. You could go forever, but the one that you were not aware of was that when Whitney Houston was taking so many pills, which makes you constipated, Bobby Brown had to fetch doo-doo out of her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and that was featured in a documentary about their relationship. Um, I love this and one. And that is the term they actually used. Fetch? Yeah. <laughs> Mary Steenbergen? I love this one, too. No way. She has one? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not bad, though. It's that she uh, she suffered, like, a stroke or some sort of medical event. Oh, uh, yeah. And from then on was like, I can't stop hearing music. And so she learned how to play piano, I think learned how to play guitar, maybe even learned how to sing and recorded or at least wrote several songs because for whatever reason, like, whatever happened to her neurologically made it to where she can't stop hearing music. So there's still a chance for me. Yeah, no, it's like I whenever, might be a musician someday. I think every time we talk about this, we reference, like, you know, the person who just, like, gets st- struck by lightning and knows Mandarin or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's real or not, but it's probably the only way you and I are learning Mandarin. <laughs> uh, let's just do two more. Uh, ben Affleck. There's so many again, but the one that I think you're referring to is that uh, when Jennifer Garner, who was at, at that point his ex-wife, drove him – to rehab they stopped the jack in a box on the way <laughs> there's a photo of him in the car clearly fucked up <laughs> then he gets out of rehab and dumps her yeah. yes that's my favorite part yeah <laughs> and then and then no uh, no yeah okay. you can, you yeah, can probably find the photo find yeah there's a hilarious picture of him in like the back seat of a sedan and i may be remembering this incorrectly but uh it's clear that he was like babe tacos <laughs> <laughs> Been eating cafeteria food for two weeks and yeah. eat something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeez, man. <laughs> like, however bad you feel about yourself. He's in the back seat. You have not been there. Like, I've been down. He's the king of dude, but yeah, that is beating down yeah. memes, right? Yeah. She is literally passing back to him. And I'm pretty sure that's Minnie Driver, who he used to be. Or no, Matt Damon, right? Maybe Matt Damon was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know the movie, but I, I thought. I think they dated. Yeah, so he's got two of his potential, two of his exes here on the way to rehab. <laughs> Uh, and finally, Cam Newton. <laughs> That's so great. Oh, man. That's all I want is a quick stop at Jack in a Box on the way to rehab. Cam <laughs> Newton, obviously, we all know this one, has three large portraits in his home. One of uh, Barack Obama, one of Martin Luther King Jr., and one of Cam Newton. <laughs> all right. Uh, another audio clip to uh, break up some of these categories. Um, we had another more on dog. You don't want to dig up things uh, of the past, but I do think a lot of people were anticipating, hey, once this six-month uh, fog lifts, you're going to – the dog just took your napkin. Oh. Literally. <laughs> Moron dog. <laughs> he literally <laughs> – Here, boy. <laughs> that was uh, life imitating art. Imitating life. Imitating life. <laughs> and the napkin he took was, like, bigger than – the dog. Yeah. He's just trying to carry that thing out of there. It was great. It was really good to witness. I've learned. We have a tough eating situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like over here is not good for me. The other one attacked you for pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Long ago. Yeah. Now I do have a tray with Rolando Blackman <laughs> embedded in it. So we're going to get to uh, Jake has a buddy here in just a second. But these are just brief notes from the show. Um, February 1st, Nora stole $20 from Jake and put it in her piggy bank. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that did happen, and there was more money in there, which I was uh, impressed with. You know, it's like not cheating and getting a hundred. Like the fact that she was like, "All right, <clears throat> I'll just take this twenty. I'll take yeah. this twenty. There yeah. was like forty bucks in there or something." February fifth, Emmett Smith says Dallas should have gotten the World Cup because we have roads. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that Emmett Smith World Cup press conference a lot. Like, just whose idea was, did he prepare at all? Like, did anybody even send him, like, a PowerPoint? Or is he just like, I'm Emmett Smith? Yeah, I'm Probably. saying that. Uh, February 8th, uh, <laughs> do you remember the kid that was throwing the football up to himself in Frisco when we were at Cane Rosso? <laughs> I do, and that was horribly depressing. I think Dan <laughs> and I both had a... Remind me of my childhood. Yeah. He had to glom on to uh, no other kids around. there with their dad, and he just lined up and played corner. Unless there was sportsy <laughs> boyfriend in the picture, maybe we'd Yeah, and I mean, at least my brother and I were semi-close in age, but it would be funny when you were a kid, like if we'd be out at the park, me, brother, dad, on like a dad weekend, and there was clearly a kid there that had nobody with him, and he would kind of try to like horn in, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I think this is really just about us right now. We get four days a month, so... February 12th, Jake doesn't care about wearing socks on the correct foot. How and do divorced dads get the every other weekend? <laughs> Shouldn't they almost get every weekend? Well, because I think... They just don't want us for every weekend. They definitely don't want you for every for every weekend. No. But I also think mom wants some time to be fun time. So that you're not just having all of your fun time with dad. Yeah. Because, like, the week sucks. I just right? don't remember... A lot of fun times, even on the weekends, I was at home with mom. <laughs> like, yeah. Because it was like, probably like up your ass about something cleaning. That you didn't do during the week. Yeah. Have you heard of the bit of, we've probably talked about this, a divorced couple, they will each get their own apartment and mm-hmm. they will go live. So like if I got the dream, I get divorced. Mm-hmm. I would live here for two weeks or for a week. Then I go stay at my apartment for a week while she lives here. And, you know, so the kids always stay at the same house. Um, I have heard of that, actually. That seems pretty interesting. I think primarily the reason that that usually happens is if you've purchased a house that you're, like, kind of upside down in when you get divorced. So, like, selling it is going to be bad for both of you. Mm -hmm. So just keeping the house is going to be better, and it's probably better for the kids. Or wonder if you just had one apartment. Mm Mm-hmm. Where would or one ho- uh, two houses? But now I go stay. That's probably weird because what if I start, you know, tagging tagging, tagging Pam Anderson or Which something? Which you of course would. Yeah. Yeah, Christy Brinkley or something else <laughs> topical. <laughs> I just saw a thing about a Baywatch reboot, so she's in my head. I think the uh, the three day four day thing is a lot more common now than it was for sure when we were growing up. I didn't know anybody who had that. No. But now I think it that's was always actually, the every other weekend. Yeah. yeah, and maybe you had a friend who like got to go to Number One Fun Street on Wednesday once a month with their dad. Okay. Sorry, but Blake. I, I think it's actually that's way great. more common now for dads to have like forty to fifty percent custody. February twelfth. Too woke. Well, no, I'm just talking to the judge. <laughs> <laughs> we find we find out that Jake only has four toes. Oh, that's right. The picture of Jake. Yeah. The controversial picture. I'm not going to show you guys again because <laughs> one of my socks today has a hole in it. Mm-hmm. So I'm already kind of worried about it. <laughs> the same day, Dan told us about how somebody at the downstairs party <clears throat> dove into Dan's love sack and broke it. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, we thought we were hammered up here. Yeah. Uh, February 12th, again, the same day. Jake tells us that uh, he had a hallway in his house in San Marcos where they put up a picture of Arsenio Hall and called it Arsenio Hall. It's 100% true. <laughs> I still have, I love it, I and I want to do that in our new studio. I think I still have the picture. <laughs> if we have it was studio. autographed. Uh, February 13th, Jake says he can't be held captive because he'd be too annoying. <laughs> the same day, uh, one source of Jake's childhood trauma is Chappie told him and Joe he'd take him to a Jerry Springer show and never did. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of the studio audience. Yeah. Um, Jake, you weren't here for this. Uh, this was a hypothetical that we came up with uh, when Jared Sandler was in. Would you work seven days a week for four months off, four months straight off, like Jared's schedule? Seven days a week during the season, but you get four months we off. We were complaining. I think I was complaining because they had just announced 
Jared's going to be doing how many games and for TV. Yeah. Um, Dave Raymond was going to be doing so many games, but Dave Raymond gets ten days off. I was like, the guy hasn't worked in four months, and he's now demanding ten days off during the season. Um, um, and yeah, so that was Jared's like, yeah, but I work seven days a week, blah, blah, blah. I need, you know, we need some time off. I don't think I would do that. You I wouldn't want would. four straight months? If you told me it was six days, I might be able to do it. But I couldn't work for, what is that, ostensibly uh, 245 straight days of work or something? Like, I can't, I'm not doing that. But is it work when you're covering baseball? I mean, that's a part of the problem is you're but now, making me watch four baseball straight for months. Four straight days. Four straight months. What are you going to do, You though, can go like to month? Europe for two months. You yeah, can go. yeah, I mean, yeah. but you could do that in a month. At some point, you're going to get diminishing ROI on those four months that you're off. Mm-hmm. And that's even like if you discount like having kids or something like that. That's All right, my next offer for you six, is... Six days a week, we might be able to talk. You work five straight months, you get one off. Five straight months, one off. Do you want it? And it's seven days a week? Yeah. That's a lot more palatable to me. Like, think about like, uh, you know, actually I was, I was, I met with one of our lawyers the other night uh, and her husband used to work on a rig. They do like 28 on, like 14 off. So it's not like as extreme mm-hmm. as what you're talking about. And I think some of them actually get like 21, 21. But people who work on oil, oil rigs will work with no days off for a month to two months. What about a fireman schedule? That's like what three one and a half or three two or something. That's like easy. Now they're going to a uh, forty eight seventy two. That I mean two straight days and three days off. Yeah, four days off. Other than the part where you're in a house <laughs> that's on fire, being a firefighter <laughs> would be, I think, pretty easy to be honest. Yeah, the pole. That's fun. Um, Didn't even consider that. On February 16th, Good point, though. Dan once got pulled over in the exact same spot in back-to-back days. Yeah. Funny. Uh, February Dove 19th. Loop. Watch out for Dove Loop. I don't think Jake was here for this either. We tried buying the dumbzone.com for $200. No, I was at least around. And the counteroffer was 75000 <laughs> <laughs> And the, the, the funniest part about that was, was like we thought somebody was doing a bit, like, but they've owned it for like five years. Right. So they've de- they definitely don't know who we are. No. And yeah, they countered with seventy five <laughs> grand. Like, but then his next counter was sixty nine. Yeah. And so we I, thought, okay. I sent him a message that I like your style. Yeah. And I think then I I up my thing up to uh, forty or four hundred and twenty. And that's where negotiations died. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, February twenty first, we had on the doctor who delivered the gorilla by C section. I thought that was awesome. Who also um, delivered my daughter? Yes. Uh, and then there was a mix-up at the hospital. <laughs> right. And that's that's the whole problem that uh, Jake has at home these days. Yeah. February 22nd. Like raise an ape. Dan did the story <laughs> an about autistic the... autistic ape. <laughs> <laughs> Dan did the story about the financial analyst that got scammed for $50,000. That was insane. Uh, the next day, February 23rd, Dan reads a birthday three months early and possibly ruins their birthday surprise. Damn, dude. February 26th, Dan admits he's DM'd back and forth with AT&T Lily, which I thought was a huge accomplishment for you. Thanks. The, anti, then, the anti-Sydney Sweeney. And then February 29th, Dan asks if this is the 20th or 21st century. That was a tough moment <laughs> for you. I think I uh, came down on the right side of history on that one, though. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Uh, we have a Words with Dan uh, video man. Uh, this is was caught on video. Um, so let's see if we can fire that one up. Yeah, were you upset, let's say, that you weren't the only survivor? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> He's got a wife. Oh, yeah, she might hear this. <laughs> Maybe we don't. Yeah, she's sitting right here next to me. I, yeah, yeah, I, let's, I we'll really ask you next week. Speak to that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen Bruce Willis, though, the uh, the movie Unbreakable? That's it. Yeah. I, would, I would feel like a badass if I were you. Yeah, you could, I mean, you roll could the anything. dice today. Yeah, go uh, parachute, jump without a parachute type thing, you know, all that stuff. Or what do you call that? Yeah, I'm pretty old for that stuff, What man. would you say? Parachute, jump without a parachute doesn't make sense. Skydive without a parachute. <laughs> no. Skydive, yeah. yeah. I have trouble with words there, Troy. So uh, that little look Jake gives me is uh, what happens when there's a words with Dan of, hey, 
We got him. I've learned not to even. <laughs> yeah, were you upset? Let's not, say don't, that don't you were react. the. That was the. That was Troy who survived the helicopter crash. <clears throat> yes. In Kauai. Boy, have you seen pictures of that? Uh, I mean, I saw the ones initially that day. Like, are there more? Uh, maybe it's just from that day. I don't know. I it's, mean, yeah, it looks like, like I don't know how you. Can't believe he walked out of there. No. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. I but, think he is superhuman. It's the, the bird, the whirly bird, was destroyed. All right, final category. It's my favorite. Jake has a buddy. I'm just going to hammer through these. This is really not that interesting of a category. It's awesome. <laughs> For instance, Jake had a buddy who the Columbia blew up over his parents' farm. Jake had a buddy. It was in Nacogdoches. <laughs> Everybody remembers that story. The space shuttle exploded over Saturday, there. Saturday, right? Yeah. yeah. Jake had a, had a buddy uh, whose parents bought a house in Angel Fire. Jake has a buddy whose not doctor got himself addicted to prescription pills. <laughs> That's actually a very interesting story. <laughs> Jake had a buddy who he got in a fight with over his keys and broke his hand. Check it out. Jake had a buddy who paid $50 to motorboat Stormy Daniels. His name is uh, <laughs> Jordan Richardson. <laughs> He's been featured on the show many times. Jake has a buddy who is blind and would ask if the Stars made the playoffs after every game. <laughs> Jake yeah, I mean, a- yeah. I, that's part of me just doing a public service. Jake had a buddy whose divorce went to court and and his lawyers had his uh, search history. That was terrifying. Jake had a buddy who has Spock. They also had a picture of his pipe, Dan. Oh, no. Why'd that come up? His wiener? No. Not oh. His... <laughs> oh. Good question, though. What pipe? Like he had a weed Crack pipe. pipe? Oh, okay. Like he was not like some... But that's why he can't have custody? Yeah. Because he smokes. Like she had taken a picture of the pipe like in the closet. Uh, I was like, this man is a drug addict. Mm -hmm. Jake has a buddy who had Spock's head in a lawn chair tattooed on his arm. That's not a buddy of mine, but that is a band (laughs) I used to listen to. And uh, that's also the favorite band of the lady who cuts Dan and mine's hair. (laughs) Mm. And finally, Jake has a buddy who Jake found nude pictures of his parents. (laughs) After I brought that up, there was some <laughs> discussion in the group chat about was that. Was that exciting? Like, you're fired up about that, or is that... What do you think? It was awesome. Oh, okay, good. Well, certain moms are not uh, one that you'd want to see. We were like 13. Okay. It doesn't matter, dude. It's a Polaroid of your friend's mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And probably the highlight of the month is a video that will play us to break. Uh, this is from February 1st. when we were broadcasting in Oklahoma on video. Was it February 1st? It was released on February 1st. The only one who's missed series of debates that have ever occurred? I don't uh, don't know. Do you know? No. Well, I'm not just going to look at the only black guy here. (laughs) I read. Uh, <laughs> I read the Frederick Douglass book. It's great. You've never heard of the Lincoln Douglass debates? No, uh, fill us in there, Dominic. It happened. <laughs> I feel like back in those days, pretty easy to pick a winner. <laughs> no, I mean that was a, that was like a famous thing, dude. Like. Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Doug- Douglass debated like half a dozen times or something. And it was like a healing moment for the nation. Mm. It's thought of as like one of the high points of discourse. And you know what? Whatever. Um, really, I'm interested. I need to it know. It really brought the nation together uh, at a time like that. Like Ted Lasso. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, surely they wouldn't fight in a war, you know, around that time or anything. That's when they did agree that, hey, the 40 acres uh, per man thing, yeah, let's do that. Very fair. How about a mule? As long as as you stay alive, we're going to do this. (laughs) Got it. Uh, Wait, I'm I'm 100% wrong. (laughs) Golly. (laughs) Were you not going to say anything? What is it? So what was it? It's it's Douglas, but it's not... (laughs) Yeah, so Lincoln's debating a black man in in the age of slavery. <laughs> okay. God dang it. Is this our, Don't is, just yell slave. <laughs> who was it? Now who is the Douglas? Stephen Douglas. Oh, from My Three Sons? No. 
You this, must be just pretending. Abraham to Lincoln no and Frederick you know Douglass were like very close. This is our lowest. I do moment. know that. No, it's not. It is. This is the worst moment we've ever. Yeah, had. but you thought. I thought they debated that there are public debates between a white man and a black man. Frederick in Douglass. Eighteen fifty. Frederick right? Douglass was like a public intellectual. He was yes, not, I know. Okay, so I'm just saying, like, I've it read, was not impossible that he could have been in, involved in a debate. He was friends with Abraham Lincoln. We had Liz Brunig on, and for like a little bit, we did a respectable show. A little show. bit of legitimacy. We were okay for a little bit. <laughs> so he debated someone named Douglas, but it wasn't about... Stephen, yeah, from whatever. Am I wrong that Frederick Douglass and Abraham we, we, we Lincoln were friends? On. Just keep you, going. You have to read the next birthday. Robert Tractor Trailer. <laughs> You're listening to The Dumb Zone. Or, I mean, that guess is what? Stupid, I actually like, don't know what's worth the hang zone or the dumb zone. What's worse? What's worse, Eden? Like, you stole the, the name from something else. The hang zone. Uh, already yeah. a horrible yeah. name. Yeah, but the hang zone. Already a terrible name, so I that's, don't really know. That's not your thing. That's like right, naming was, your show yeah, you The Simpsons that. and yeah, then literally. calling it The Samsons. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not really giving creativity. No puppets. Jeez. Not giving creativity. They were uh, they were friends though. By the way, again, uh, that doesn't make any sense though. That why they would be debating each other. Again, like over I said, slavery. Like it's Lincoln, and Frederick Douglass is black. Why would they have a debate? Like it could have been over how quickly <laughs> to do it. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> Don't I, forget. I think it was a bad point. Trump was at. Uh, was at Chelsea Clinton's wedding. I will not forget that, <laughs> Jake. Um, anyway. That was a good point. We have a guest. We do. And uh, we're on video today, so if you are watching on YouTube, you can, uh, you're can you going to see her. And if, if you are listening on the Patreon or whatever, then you will hear the voice of someone who was on Shark Tank. This past Friday night, if you remember last week, I told you to watch Shark Tank. Hope you guys did. It is Daniela Morgan Pasquovaca. Yeah! Did I say that right? No, you did. Uh, the cheers are necessary uh, because it is not an easy last name to pronounce. So I appreciate that you got that one right. Pasquovaca. Um, anyway, I'm Dan. This is Jake. Hey there. And uh, Blake is the guy who's been setting you up to be on here. And uh, Daniela, of course, is, well, I don't know, of course, she's with a uh, brand new company that is possibly part owned by one of the sharks called Mella Pet Care. And uh, I don't know. I thought this was just interesting to have you on, talk about maybe your company a little bit, but of course, just the experience of going on Shark Tank. How did uh, how did that come about? So yeah, that's actually a very interesting point. We were poached by one of the casting directors, and this doesn't happen, right? People spend years and years and years prepping for Shark Tank, and it's like a crazy application cycle. And last, this was still crazy, but a little bit less crazy because last February, so over a year now, uh, one of the casting directors reached out to us and said, "Hey." guys have a really weird but cool product no one's ever heard of it before we've never had pet tech on because it's very niche so why don't you join us and so we kind of skipped about 75 percent of the application process now we still had to go crazy over you know business applications writing essays you know going back to school with our videos and our write-ups and our questions, but we were able to skip a lot of the process until eventually we got that guaranteed film date. And even after filming, there still wasn't a guaranteed air date. So there is just a lot of waiting and saying, okay, at any point in time, they could cut us entirely from the show, or we could get on there and we could have a good time. <laughs> so you weren't, so you're just doing this company on, on your own. And they reach oh, out. No, I have... no I, but I mean, you got your your people. I, oh, right, right. I, I'm yeah. just saying, oh, you yeah. guys are doing it's this on your own, and um, you're not getting in. You're not even wanting to get investors. Then, 
well, we do, but not Shark Tank, because we had heard that the process for applying was just so insane that we were just kind of focusing on mostly angel investments. And we said, you know, Shark Tank is a very cool show. There's no way we're ever going to get on that. Okay. Um, Because, okay, let me just play the intro, because I think Jake purposely didn't watch it, so we could kind of, we like to, uh, you know make sure we're delivering the information well to everybody listening as well. You know what I mean? So that if, uh, if, if you and I are not, uh, then Jake can say, hey, uh, what are you actually saying here? So this was the intro, and I thought, this took me aback. And see if it, uh, see if it jars you a little bit, Jake. Next up is a business modernizing health care. I'm Daniela. And I'm Anya. And we're seeking 250K for 2.5% of our company. Oh, uh. <laughs> They were also taken aback, I think, by the very large valuation. <laughs> That's fair. You know, I, I did not have a big role in the actual valuation of the company, but we actually had some producers right as we were lined up, ready to go into the hallway, say, hey, guys, it's not too late to change your ask. They thought it was too high? Yeah. And it was just crazy that, you know, we're kind of getting in the zone. We're doing final wardrobe checks, kind of doing our power moves outside of that hallway. And they're like, hey, you can change it still. And we're like, that is crazy. Uh, It's a little too late for that. Wow. I'm not good at math. What is that valuation of the company? Uh, What? 10 million. 10 million, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I guess you could describe it, but what I took away from it is it's like uh, it is the main thing that stood out to me was you have a thermometer. And if you want to check your dog's temperature, you know what you do with the thermometer, Jake? You put it in their bottom. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, it's always surprising how really well they take that <laughs> when I have my dog at the vet. But it's a, it they they will take that well. However, if your two year old happens to um, perform that act with their digit, their they, finger, they don't prefer that as much. Okay, you've seen that. I have seen that very yeah. recently. I have seen the game. What's at the end of this tail? <laughs> hey, what's under here? Because um, all you do is you know, hey, here's a round block. Put it in, put it in the round hole. Like she's seeing. That's just a smart kid. Sure. That's Thank seeing, you. I appreciate this is, that. This is what I'm supposed to do. Um, yeah. So uh, obviously valued very, very high. That's what at, at first I thought, okay, these guys don't even want to get a bid. Which um, sometimes it feels like people go on there with that in mind. Right. I'm getting the pub Yeah. for being on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but but basically it's a thermometer though. That you could put under the dog's arm. Arm? Leg. I guess the front is the leg. (laughs) (laughs) They're all legs, right? They don't have any arms. But if they had an arm, it would be the arm. The leg pit. What do you call it? We actually have four. four We call them arm pits. Why not? There you go. Uh, We don't have a number for it. Okay. But yeah, you put it under there and you could take the temperature, which seems a lot less intrusive than the bottom. Sure. And you guys, this is like revolutionary no one has ever done this before you guys have this technology yeah and you probably should have gone on shark tank yourself to pitch because that's about it <laughs> that's the the way it works is you know our pets don't like it uh, anybody doing it doesn't like it yeah and pets especially you know they're like this is kind of an important temperature of course because it's a it's a really important vital sign to know if your pet has a fever or if there's something going on, but a lot of vets have stopped taking it because it's so crass, honestly. And then it ruins the mood for the entire uh, the entire visit. The pet is then cowering in the corner because they're like, well, I know what you just did to me. Yeah, We're not going to do any of that anymore. So for the rest of the 45 minute visit, I'm going to be hiding. And if you come near me, I'm probably going to growl or hiss because we started off on the worst foot possible. Let me ask that. I thought it was kind of funny because you put together a promotional video at first to help sell it. And um, it was just kind of the the picture of the dog laying down sick. I just thought that was kind of funny. 
Like if you're at home and like, I just don't feel like there's oftentimes I bring a bowl of warm, you know, chicken noodle soup to my sick dog who's lying in bed. But I suppose, you know, obviously this is a good bit in case your dog, but, but you have to like play it up for the video, like put a little something over his head. I think it was like a cool rag. It was funny. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. It's honestly any way to sell the product. Everyone knows that comedy wins nowadays. No one wants to hear us blabbering on and on about, you know, why is it important that you know your pet's temperature? Like, let's get serious about seizures and post-operative monitoring. Uh, people just want to see the cute dogs and they want to have a laugh about it. Okay, so since, as Dan said, I didn't I didn't watch uh, the episode, uh, did you ever consider actually bringing the dog? Okay, you know what? I this makes me so sad. We had a dog. Uh oh. So oh, I, sorry, I don't know. Jake. Um, this, <laughs> you know, Shark Tank, you're, you get ten minutes of fame, but you record for an hour. So we're up on stage forever with the sharks. And it's great because you kind of get into this good conversation with them. They're super nice people, and it feels like you're just hanging out. And we had that whole thing. We brought the world's cutest dog. He's a registered therapy dog for a funeral home. He was all groomed up. He was all ready for his moment of fame. And the segment was fantastic because we demoed our products. Nothing went wrong. And as you know, things frequently go wrong. And it was great. And we had Damon John come up and I took his temperature under his armpit. Such a good segment. At the end, we had a little photo shoot with him too. And so we go in ready to watch this full edited episode and they completely cut the dog out. Oh, and so just so unbelievable. I like my heart just sank for him. We're like, poor Obi. Obi went to the groomers before his watch party because he knew he was going to be famous. And obviously everyone loves dogs. And the producer just cut him out. Yeah, how much thought was that on, on your guys' part, too, the uh, the outfits you were wearing and all that? Make sure you coordinate and don't wear the same thing? Oh, nothing. My mom actually chose my outfit for oh, me. Oh, okay. I wondered, uh, <laughs> how many times did you practice the pitch? Because you guys had, like, a bit. So at least 100 times. That's the other funny thing. My dad is a media skills coach. So he had us just going and going and going. And I think if we didn't have him, we probably would have you know, practiced it a couple of times and said, yeah, that's, it's good enough. But my dad's harsh, as he should be. And he was like, no, we're going to keep practicing this for months and months until there's not an ounce of it that goes wrong. So, you know, thanks to him, it was a good pitch. Okay. So I want to play this for Jake and for everybody um, who didn't see it. But you talk about trying to be funny. You want to be memorable. Um, they did a bit and I don't know if the sharks received it well. And now that you're telling me you were actually there for an hour and it's that heavily edited, the way they edited it, it was kind of like this didn't go over well, but let's just see, uh, what you think of this. And we're not stopping there. We have several innovations in development to create a world where pets live longer, healthier lives with their humans. Pause up. Fins up, sharks. By the way, just <laughs> overall, a great idea just because people love their pet. You know, you will pay. Yeah, they have you over the barrel, right? Yeah. I mean, I may have uh, balked at the $5,000 ACL surgery, but for the most part, everybody's like, all right, well, whatever the vet says, I just have to pay that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't you know, want to be a bad are, pet owner. People are having pet therapists now. Of course. You know, but if you got money and your kids move out... Well, now your pets are your kids, and that's – anyway. Sorry, uh, so they did like a pause up, right, and then a fins up, so they had the visuals going. They all they all choreographed. They had practiced this 100 times. Kenny Gant. Um, and, uh, okay, here – we're not even to the bit yet, though. Pause up. Fins up, sharks. <laughs> Who's ready to chase the future of pet care with Mella Pet, pet Care? care. <laughs> Couple quick questions. Daniel, I know you have a burning question. We're going to get to it, but right before we do, Ben, kick it freestyle. You got it, Anya. Mella, pet care, technology, devices and apps promote longevity. Hardware, software, data science, machine learning fuels the home pet appliance. 
tech get smarter using our algorithm. Not only Mela and Biggie, but a whole ecosystem. Started from the bottom, slinging Mela's at the dog. The girls park. are dancing. Now we're certified, patented, Next and them. trademarked. Vets check vitals. Now pet parents that didn't get look as choreographed. Empowering pet parents is what we do. Our data is interoperable. It's meant to be shared. Can you tell we came to Shark Tank a little overprepared? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> ben, do not give up your day job. All right. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. I just, I, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> you know, it was basically the world versus Ben, who was, did the rap. And all of us were like, Ben, don't do it. Don't do it. We have the dog. We have other stuff that make us TV worthy. But this man was like, no, I need to rap on stage. And it was him and one of our producers who just somehow came to the same wavelength and made it happen. And then the fact that then this stayed on and the dog got cut. <laughs> just so much. It didn't look like, it looked like once he started rapping, again, they do editing, but it looked like everybody was like, oh no. <laughs> like the, the sharks, the sharks were like, all right, I'm out. Like yeah. in their head, I'm out now because of this. They were actually they were nicer than it appears to be when they edited it. They they were gracious. There was a little bit of dancing that they cut out. Like Damon John was showing some moves too. So, you know, they understood that it was a bit for TV, but no, they weren't as hateful of it as the final edit made it seem like. Well, the fact that you got an offer, uh, given what I just heard, means your product is incredible. <laughs> I guess it must be. <laughs> So what's that like as they're going person to person and do they edit that? Like is one of the no's later or, or is that actual chronological order? Because everybody gave a no and then it's like, uh, I might be interested. Yeah, so that actually was in chronological order. It does come towards the end. So I would say we've been up there for about 40 minutes Everyone's gotten their chance to speak. You know, the sharks jump over each other, but they ask, you know, relatively nice questions. And then it's the first person. So I think it was in this case, Mr. Wonderful. He went out or it, it might have been Lori, but who knows? But once the first one goes out, it is in chronological order and it is kind of one after the other until you get one who in this case you know it's like actually i do have an order uh, an offer for you and it's sometimes you do have that little back and forth where another shark makes an offer but i think we heard our offer and we're like you know we're gonna stick with you regardless of what the remaining sharks have to say okay so yeah the first few gave no's what what's going through your mind at that point like oh man at least we got promotion yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of like, okay, well, at least they were nice about it. They are very kind people. So, you know, even if the part that was cut was the the no, I don't want this. We heard a lot that was, you know, we appreciate what you guys are doing. We like you guys as people. Of course, we don't like to hear the no's, but they said it in a nice way that it felt like you were getting broken up with in a actually pleasant way. So this is a thing. You're valuing it. We already said pretty high, and now Cuban comes in with the fir with an offer, correct? And that was weird yes. too, because like the next guy was like, "Okay, since you're even entertaining his offer, I'm out." Like, wait, you're a, I thought you're a businessman. Like, shouldn't you be bidding against Cuban here? But uh, that I guess you've seen this too, right, Jake? The oh yeah, if he starts bidding against, then Cuban might just be like, "Well, then okay. I'm out." Yeah, it's like an ego thing. Yeah. So that's a weird game you got to play, too, I guess, if you're on stage. Yeah, plus he also said, Daniel Lubetsky mentioned that it was going to be a sharkier offer anyway. So at that point, we're like, okay, we're, we're going to go with Cuban. He's a great guy. Everyone knows him, and his offer is going to be less sharky. Um, what was, so, okay, take us through the offers then. At first, what did Cuban say? So Cuban, this is what's really nice, and I actually had to – explain this to everybody at our watch party. So he, we all asked for uh, 250K for 2.5, right? And he retaliated with 250K for 6%. And in theory that devalues your company, but he structured it in such a way that it didn't. So only 2.5% would be normal shares. And then the rest would be structured in a way that it doesn't bring all of the other investors value down. And of course, it's a show where they're not going to have that explained. You're not going to have the narrator say, 
so this is what an advisory share is and this is what just happened because people who are watching at home are like that we don't care about the finances what matters is just that cuban's a great guy that you know he said you know i'm going to make sure that you stay at your current valuation and we'll just restructure it and at that point it was a yes uh, our CEO, Anya, had some math written on the front of her hand. I think you can catch her looking at it at one point. And it was, you know, how low are we willing to go and how high are we willing to go? You have to do all of that ahead of time because you're not allowed to step off stage. You're not allowed to go in a corner and discuss. You have to make that decision right there. And so if you don't have an idea of your numbers, you're basically screwed because you're like, wait, can somebody do the math for me? Now you have to know that. And it fell within that range. And we actually said yes very quickly <laughs> but because they're editing it for tv they drew that out as long as possible they're okay. like let's put in that incredibly awkward pause <laughs> yeah for sure no i thought there was a lot of hesitation um so you're not even allowed to just like hey can i just turn around and we all whisper to each other no you're not allowed to do that it looks bad apparently okay yeah that's that's, that's very high stakes yeah and especially if they just start <clears throat> changing the valuation or that was the concern at first, right? Yeah. You, that's what one of the other sharks just jumped right in and said, well, he's just turned your company into crap. Yeah, we're lucky that Mark Cuban is, he's considered like the human calculator because he knows how to do that in his head incredibly quickly so that we don't have to do it ourselves. How was the catering? <laughs> um, terrible. <laughs> really? Um, that's disappointing. You know, yeah, it, it's very sad. Uh, we were there two days. We were supposed to film the first day, and then that first day after sitting there for about eight hours, they come in and they're like, oh, sorry, you actually have to film the next day. And so we come in the next day, and I think it was better that we just, everyone had more energy and the sharks were more willing to really have a chat with us. But I don't remember eating a lot other than some chips. Do you interact? <laughs> Do you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. Do you interact at all with uh, people who are there with other ideas? And like, if so, are you like, that's not going to fly. That sucks. You do, actually. So we had met most of the people that were within our same episode. They bus you to and from. So you're allowed to interact with the people who haven't uh, filmed yet. So you're taken to your little hotel you go straight to the green room and you can chat with those companies. But then as soon as you film, you're not allowed to talk to anybody and they bust you right out of there. But yeah, there were a few companies that we, we chatted with that, and we're like, okay, that's incredibly mathy or yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Or alternatively, yeah, that's awesome. Like I'm going to go home and pre-order one of your products, especially the food ones. And they were like, that actually, that sounds really good. We're going to get some of that food as soon as we get back. So it is interesting that there's a decent amount of company interaction with others. They try to limit it as much as they can, but it's hard to do that when you're all in one studio. It's like the Pro Bowl. Do you sign some kind of NDA or, you know, when you leave, they say, don't talk to anybody about this? Yeah, you know, in theory, you're not actually even supposed to say that you're going to film to anybody. So, for instance, you know, you leave your boyfriend at home and you say, see ya in five days. You're not allowed to say where, you're not allowed to say why. And you're just kind of supposed to trust that everybody is okay with that. So, you know, you won't hear from me for a couple of days. Don't ask questions. Don't worry about it. Don't look at my location on Find My Friends. And you're not supposed to say anything, anything, anything until you get your air date which is insane. And I think for most of us who have families and people that we love, we're going to blab. Like, of course we are. Like the first thing that you do is that you call your mom and you're like, mom, guess what? <laughs> or of course you need your mom to help you choose your outfit. Outfit, yeah. The show. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the NDA is supposed to just, you're, you're not supposed to say anything, but people do. I feel like <clears throat> Shark, Tank's, uh, Shark Tank is one of those shows where you watch an episode or two and you feel like you're able to value companies now. You know, I kind of felt the same way picking out uh, my wife's engagement ring. Like after looking at a few diamonds, I felt like, I yeah, that's a, that's a fake. You know, yeah. I, I could, I'm an expert now. Um, were you just hammering Shark Tank episodes and have an idea of how you would be up there and how is it different actually in front of them? Yeah, so we did a lot of prep. It was a lot of, we are season 15, so we watched a bunch of episodes and we had this whole document written out of questions that they might ask us. 
And our thought was that we would go up there and we would get hammered because that's how a lot of the episodes are edited and portrayed. And so we kind of went in, we're a little bit, not standoffish, but we were on guard because we were ready to get a lot of these hard questions. It's not like that at all because they are the nicest people you will ever meet. You know, Damon John is like, oh, I like your shoes. And the other guy's like, oh, you know, nice hair today. And they're just regular people. So suddenly you're up there and you're like, okay, well, none of the <laughs> answers that I prepared that were super formal or, you know, super like thought out, they're all going to go out the window because now I'm just going to have a conversation with these people. And it's how they break you even, down. You, you fell for their trick. Yeah, I mean, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, our guards were let down, but they're just super sweet. I yeah, appreciated that a lot. <laughs> uh, where's the filming? New York? L.A., actually. Oh. Beautiful, sunny L.A. Made it feel like we were real TV stars. <laughs> uh, do you have to pay, or is it a free flight, free hotel, all that? So not we're not paid, of course, but... Yeah, they pay for the hotels, they pay for the flights, they pay for your little airport transfer and the chips that are given to you in the green room as well. So at least the logistics were all handled, and that was great. And when you said we went back to the hotel, you said we went back to the little hotel. That sounds like a bit of a shot at where they put you up. No, no, no shame. It was just the... I don't even remember what it was, but off the side of the highway. I guess all of L.A. is off the side of a highway anyway. Uh, no, they did a great job, though. They they really made us feel at home. And did you – well, you said your mom picked out your outfit. Was your mom with you? Was your parents with you? No, they weren't allowed to come. Okay. I probably would have brought them just for fun, but no, it was all – it was virtual help. Okay. Uh, so you had more than one outfit, or did you have to wear the same thing back to the studio again the next day? Yeah, we only had one outfit prepared, and you have to clear it. So that's actually another funny story. You have to clear absolutely everything. So logos, patterns are not allowed. You have to wear solid colors. And for us women, it's more normal because, you know, I wore heels, and heels aren't going to have a logo. It's not going to be a Nike sneaker. But if you're wearing a certain pattern, that's somebody's art. So you can't wear that. For instance, I have a, I have a tattoo on my ankle that's visible. I had to sign a release saying that I was the artist for that tattoo. And if I wasn't, I would have to go track down the tattoo artist who did this to me when I was 18 and say, hey, can you sign this? Because it's going to show up on stage. Oh, man. And everything is patented. The Bluetooth logo, uh, the HDMI logo is something that you can't show on stage. So it's just everything. I was wearing a little necklace that had a basket of flowers. And they're like, that's art. That's somebody else's <laughs> art. I can't be wearing that. So it is really, their process is just grueling, and most things just get cut. Now, did you get to, uh, do you have Cuban's digits? How do you guys communicate with Cuban? Email. No number yet. Maybe soon. Cyberdust. Uh, I was kind of hoping out before he sold the Mavericks that he would invite us to a game, but looks like that's not going to happen. Okay, wait. Was this before he sold the Mavericks? Yeah, when did you uh, film this? This was last June. Yeah, so we filmed quite a while ago. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then it aired Friday. You said you had a big party for that. And uh, so if it was last June, are you guys up and flying? Is, is Has Cuban been heavily involved? What What's that been like? So he actually has to wait. There's a lot of protections surrounding that because he can't really get involved until we air. There's a lot that could happen. There are people that are that get pulled from the air date the day of. So until you see yourself on TV live, 8 p.m. Eastern, there is still a chance that you won't go out. And therefore, you know, you can't send out these press releases saying that you secured investment. And so you can't really start working with anybody. Now that that's all good and done, now we actually begin the process of working with Cuban. Like, did you care where you were placed in the show? It looked like you had good, good early placement. Well, first would have been ideal, especially for the watch party, because everybody is waiting patiently. They're like, you know, got to get through Funky Mellow so that we can see <laughs> the thermometer people. And so it's kind of a, a stressful time of like, okay, get through the ads. Let's get this going. Uh, but placement wise, I mean, as long as we're not last, I think you're fine wherever you are in the episode. All right. Well, it's Mella Pet Care, right? We'll all watch for that. 
But what a tease Please that do. is. You get, you get your 250000 promised in June. You got to wait till the next year to get it. That kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the worst is if we didn't even air and you have to live your whole life knowing that you were on Shark Tank, but your episode was oh, never released. Yeah. So no one like the dog. <laughs> so at least it went out. I'm the poor dog. <laughs> like the poor, poor dog. dog. <laughs> well, Daniela, thanks very much for the time. Uh, it, it looked like a cool experience. Would you agree with that? Yeah. It was not being on with us. It was. I mean, on Shark no, Tank. No, not this one. <laughs> no, this one was better. This was so much more fun than Shark Tank. This will air today. No, if it makes we you didn't feel have better. any. We didn't have any chips, but no. Yeah. Uh, Maybe next yeah, time. this is too bad. I'd like to think that if I had flown out to your studio, we would have had chips then. Something. Well, we got pizza yep. here. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh, even better. <laughs> next time I'll fly out. Well, thanks very much for the time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. All right. There she goes. It's Daniela Morgan Pasquovaca in Mela Pet Care. All right. Sports man, you want to do sports? You want to do... I don't even know how long we've been, we've been going today. A Feels long like time. An extent, whoa. <laughs> Feels like... Uh, he feel, sports man has turned into newsman, it seems like. Yeah. Do we have... Do you want to get into any... You know what? I'm going to do a little tiny bit of sports. Okay. Um, but how long have we been going? Can you keep a track, Warren? You guys remember Warren's here? Hey, Warren. 151. We've been going 151? Yeah, we got a little break in there. You see that little gap. Every morning, Dan okay. and I are like, we're doing fine. Man, we, gotta, we want to try to go for two hours. Yeah, let's limit these to two hours. What do you guys think about that? Check. <laughs> Would you like it under two hours? Yes. Is this a little too much? <laughs> I mean, not today, but an, ordin- an ordinary day, yeah. It's just okay. funny, though. Like I, I mean, this is not like a new thing, right? Like we would, uh, when we had a boss... Like Dan and I would like talk before the show. We're like, "All right, this at this time, we're gonna cut it off early." Right, we're gonna we're and then we won't it would, go to break look late. Up, it'll be seven minutes later, and I'm like, "Dude, we're never gonna pull this off." Yeah, maybe I shouldn't do any sports. <laughs> Philip, Ashley, how are we? Two hours. I think so. I think it works good. Yeah. Everything's good. But two fifteen, a little too much. What I love about it, if I can't get to it today, we'll still do it the next morning. That convenience. That's, That's true. Yeah. That's why, like, I do think today in history is largely fluff, but there is some. Times good I lo- stuff I, I, in there. I don't I love like you it. putting it in that category. You don't love fluff? I think it's. I love it. Okay. I love it every day. Yeah, I feel like, like, should we do it? At, should we do sports at the end? And if you want to just tune out of that, I, I, that's here's the, the sports. Weird. Jason Kidd is a moron. Well, no, no, no. We'll <laughs> save Jason Kidd. <laughs> okay. My sports was going to be just a follow up, quick follow ups on some cowboy things that happened because we didn't even mention last week. Did you see the story that Mozzie Smith and his uh, storage unit? No, I guess not. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. I wish I would have bought it. So he missed making payments on his storage unit, like oh his my God. his uh, locker. So they auctioned it off. Like uh, that A&E show? Uh, storage Wars? Yeah. 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 And in it were many expensive things, you know, player cleats, you know, all this kind of stuff, but also... His Michigan playbook. Oh, my God. So someone bought that and has the Michigan playbook. Now, of course, different head coach uh, will be coming in, So, but in a system, right? So it probably was going to be much the same. That um, is very funny just given everything surrounding the Michigan football program. It was a pretty year. skinny playbook, right? It's just one page. Was it? Yeah, it's look oh. to defensive coordinator that will tell you what play they're running. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a guy. Uh, mm. That's a guy who beat his team beat up on Michigan. <laughs> right there, TCU man. Also, Terrence Parsons is tweeting again. Sweet. This came out the day I believe that all the speculation was out there about Tyron Smith will not be returning to the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Certainly planted by an agent. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, Terrence Parsons, uh, Mike's brother. I mean, you were wondering, what does yeah, what does Micah's brother think about all this? He says, Cowboys should have just came out and said, we going to, into rebuild mode. We could actually have more optimism. LOL, at this rate, next year going to end the same way. Mm-hmm. And then a uh, cry laughing emoji. Overused. Which is always great. And I said, we talked yesterday about the fact that the agent put that out there. And you could you could just tell... Because I think the last line in Ian Rappaport's uh, tweet was, uh, there's there's going to be considerable interest. 
something like that, right, in uh, Tyron Smith. So I want to, you to tell me who gave this information to Calvin Watkins because <laughs> he tweeted out, Cowboys officials spoke with the agent for wide receiver Michael Gallup on Thursday morning. No decision on his future has been made, but a source believes Gallup will have a healthy market if he's released. Yeah, no, I can't imagine who <laughs> who gave him that information. Just make sure that the uh, the agent have a healthy market. I want us to do team tweets. Like, what would the team say? Receiver that has trouble creating separation will hit free agent market. Probably no one wants him. <laughs> if wants to come back on discount, yeah. can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see it every year, right? Like, just think about, like, uh, who did they let go last year that didn't even get picked up? Ben DiNucci. R.I.P. <laughs> nah, but there was somebody they let go a couple years ago. Oh, it was when Terrence. Zeke for a while. Zeke for a while, for sure. But Terrence Williams. <laughs> like did his let, people put out oh yeah hey this, this is gonna be a little likely to be a bidding war yeah and it's like well you're just never gonna play for another team again hmm. yeah the uh the tad prescott terrence parsons uh who am i forgetting obviously cd's zeke's mo- mom cd's mom is in the game <laughs> zeke's mom was in the game i'm sure there are other teams that have this happen but i i guess i just don't see it as much that all of your best players have like a surrogate who's like, trust me, if I could get him to leave, I would. Man, at least the Chiefs, like Travis's brothers, Jason Kelsey. Yeah, like, I mean, now cool. on the flip side of that, speaking of the Chiefs, you do have oh everything Jackson. happening with Patrick, <laughs> but proving that they those distractions can be overcome. Yeah, but it's not really like Jackson Mahomes. It's not really like you see him out there bitching about the team, right? It's He's more just, just like that he assaulted that woman and does TikTok dances on Sean Taylor's yes. Jersey Retirement mm. Memorial. Yeah, the Cowboys the, feel like they have a unique amount of outside people related to players who are just complaining about the team itself. Didn't they get an A-plus in treatment of families? They did. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. What are they griping about? All right, well. We have a lot more. because pretty quick sports wasn't it yeah i mean i do want to talk about the onside or the uh the kickoff thing but we have we can do that thursday we got that we got some college stuff hell we didn't even get into russell wilson today we did not mr unlimited Here's Jake with the dumb zone news. Unlimited. all right thursday two hours for sure <laughs> there's just no way <laughs> sub two hours there's just we're no just way. gonna limit ourselves to two hours It'll never happen. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this viral video. It happened in Irving. Uh, This was Friday morning as a Brinks security guard was robbed at gunpoint and told to strip of his pants. Hmm. This happened Friday morning at about 945. He was uh, next to an open ATM. uh, Automated teller machine, Dan. Mm -hmm. Cut you off at the pass (laughs) there. Uh, So I guess it's his job to reload it with cash and someone had been scoping it out and said, on the ground, pants off. Probably thinking, like, you might have something in your pocket or your waistband, you know? Protection like, totally wise. nude? He has underwear on in okay. this picture. Look at him. You got him? And it's right in front of a Whataburger. Yes. <laughs> it's, just it's very beaten looking. <laughs> wow. Just getting, he's getting his pants taken off just right in the parking lot. That is odd. He's the uh, the guy seems to be spending an inordinate amount of time taking the pants off. Like, well, you got to take the shoes off first. Because yeah, I would want to no. keep those pants down around the legs, because then he couldn't okay. get up and run after you. <laughs> that is just such a tough, tough scene right Caught there. Caught on his man. Nikes. It's literally like it looks like it literally looks like trying to change your kid for the bath. <laughs> You're like, come on. Your kid's laying there yeah. as if lifeless. Yeah, and they won't take their shoes off. And you're like, all right, I'll pull them off over the shoes. Take them off. Yeah, it's very and hard. And they're keeping their feet out, yeah. so you can't get the pants over <laughs> them if they would just straighten their foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bend your foot. Bend your – no, your <laughs> – So beaten. The heel. That's <laughs> yeah, a tough look. Irving PD said uh, large sum of money but did not say how much. That might mean it's a good haul. Man, Dallas, Texas TV is the best. Yeah, they're killing it. One time whenever I was in, uh, I think I was either 
late high school or early college. It must have been college because there was pot involved. <laughs> uh, we went over to a guy's house. It was an apartment over in Ulysses to score Dan, if you will. And a buddy of mine had some Jordans on. And uh, the guy who was there was like, yeah. And I swear to God, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. He goes, we did our transaction. He was like, step up out of those. And my buddy was like, what? And he's like, off. And it took us a second to realize. He was just like, you're leaving your shoes with me. Like, I want those. And you already paid. Oh, yeah. It was a clean, and I don't know that we had dealt with this person that much before. It was somewhat of a new. Yeah. <laughs> but he was just like, step up out of those. And then he had slapped to leave his shoes? Yeah. And we left with him barefoot. Oh, also said something about my shoes that <laughs> yeah. nobody was really like. <laughs> yeah, no one would ever do that for my shoes. <laughs> Got to get those. Damn, man, that's sad. What are you going to do? Not give him your shoes. Okay, let's go to step two of that plan. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Now you're at a <laughs> drug dealer's apartment. <laughs> yes, dealing with people that you don't really know was always the bad part of pot. Of, it's the bad part, yeah, for sure. But it's I remember horrible. a dude, re- huge Steelers fan. Somehow, like I don't, I just <laughs> remember <laughs> he had a. Uh, there was a little litter of bullet hole in the wall. Yeah, and you just always wondered what's that about. Don't really want to know, but and um, you know he'd want to hang for a while. Oh yeah, the guy who wants to hang for a while. And as you say. You've said this before, I think, but I think he might have had huge snake or iguana or something. Probably, yeah, yeah. some sort of terrarium. It was yeah. a very odd, yeah, big reptile type thing he, <laughs> yeah. that n- normal people just didn't have. Yeah. Uh, you've mentioned he wasn't it, but but if there was a sword hanging on the wall, that would not have been a surprise. <laughs> At all. And, yeah, then you had to talk sports or just whatever he was into that day yeah. and probably burn one with him. And So bad. The last place you ever want to be. And, but... He has what you want. But he never got my shoes. Your shoes sucked. In fact, I think he was trying to... I think I had gone to him for advice on beating a drug test once. And he told me how he failed one because um, he did cocaine the night before his drug test. I'm like... (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good that idea. That seems like a... <laughs> it was like he was trying to get a job with the city. Right. And I'm I hadn't like, even well, considered then I would... that of one of the things that I shouldn't do because I, it was intuitive to I me. wouldn't give you a job. I, I don't think I'd want him working for my city. Yeah. If you just can't... Because cocaine, I, I've heard... I'm not a cocaine guy, but that that only takes a few days to get out of your system. It's not pot, like pot. It's like a month. Yeah. Like and he's like, let me just see how close like I, I can run this. Yeah, but I mean, if I just can't help doing cocaine within 24 hours, then I don't think I should get that job. Probably don't get to run Parks and Rec. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of the Cowboys, by the way, Dak has announced that he is officially a girl dad. Um, He had a leap baby. I think it was the 29th. I think you're right. Yeah. Let's see. He announced... Uh, Along with Valerie. Did you see her? He says baby MJ, but it doesn't say whether or not he actually named his daughter Michael Jordan or not. Val, who you've had on your podcast in the past. Oh, she yeah, I baby. did. Yeah. yeah. Second kid, though, so... Doesn't really count as much as Dax. <laughs> he, you know, he does lay pretty low. He usually does, yeah. I mean, again, if we're comparing penis to gun, like, not penis squirt gun, not withstanding. But it's the worst take you ever had. I'll never let that go. <laughs> I've had a lot of bad takes. No, no, that's that one was an all timer. That was the most old man you've ever sounded. I just didn't want him out hanging out with Zeke. You agree with that? Yeah, but I mean, if he's going to hang out with Zeke and they go, they want to go buy penis <laughs> squirt guns on spring break, or they want to have both their dogs attack people. Give me the former over the latter. Well, how do you know if he never bought that penis squirt gun, he might have a couple of rings by now. <laughs> That's a good point. Thank you. That's a really good point. Uh, this is actually a very terrible story, but we're going to do it. 
North Texas man will spend the next 45 years in prison after being caught sexually assaulting a child during a recorded sleep study. Ah, <laughs> mm. oh, gosh. So this was uh, a diagnostic test. Did you ever hear about people who have you have you ever known anybody who's done this, like the sleep study? I've never known anybody, but I think I've kind of heard of it. And you'll get like, they have like the camera on you and they've got a bunch of stuff hooked up to you and they're trying to see how much you move at night. Yeah. But I'm feeling like if I have an 11 year old and they need to go get a diagnostic test like that done, I'm staying there with them, mm -hmm. like in the room. Now, maybe they're, they try to sell you on some sort of idea of, well, we need to create like the most... Like the scenario and the setting that is the most common to how they're going to be sleeping and you being in the room is not that. Hmm. But I don't think I'm leaving, though. Well, neither is being hooked up to wires and there's a camera. That's true, too. Yeah. What was the... What does sexual assault mean? You know, typically with minors, Dan, they don't actually just add in explicit yeah. details that you can... Yeah, no, I'm just, you know. Yeah. Groping. Whatever. And it's 45 years, though, so it's not like they were like, hey. 45? Yeah. Oh, wow. Not yeah. eligible for parole. Yeah, that's. He said he knew that the child was being recorded for the study, but he said he thought the room was too dark for the cameras to see the assault. Oh, so he kind of like admitted. Yeah, peeled back the curtain a little. Yeah. Jeez. I wonder if that got the sentence reduced from, like, 70 years. Because he was up front about it? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know, but that is some... That's bold, brother. Yeah, man. You're like, yeah, no, I know that they're recording this. It's probably too dark. The Texas Department of Transportation, uh, TxDOT, will start work this week on a $60 million project to overhaul the HOV lanes along 75. I bring this up only because Dan is the king of the HOV. I do love it, except I got a buddy. I have buddies too, Blake. And I never, there's never a list. <clears throat> uh, no. Who was telling me that he, so he lives in Fort Worth. I, I took a note. Dan has a buddy today. Okay. What was the other one? Well, Dan has a buddy who failed the drug test because he took cocaine the night before his interview with the city. <laughs> pretty, pretty good one. <laughs> Dan is a buddy who gave him a bro job. <laughs> no, that's uh, things Dan or Jake want. That's right. <laughs> a different category. Um, so he wor lives, uh, works in Dallas, lives in Fort Worth, and was. I think I was just talking to him about the commute. And I said, well, do you hop in that cool speed lane? Because that's a pretty cool double. Sp you know, if you go on 114, that's a single speed lane, which means... Uh. Uh, nominally, it is a single speed lane if you're Dan McDowell. Well, you can get around people in some areas. <laughs> it but, is not but a single speed lane. But for the most lane. part, around in the Dallas area, can't you can can't tell you how many people. times I've been like, man, I'm really moving fast here on uh, the 114 express lane and then just... <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't bother you, though. Another I, grip I don't slow Ford it down vehicle, in front of you. The prosper right. Ford vehicle just zooms anyway. past me. I'm like, I don't think that's a lane. <laughs> it should be three lanes. You know that area. <laughs> it's so wide. It's right around Irving. Everybody okay, knows we it. we know, officer. Everybody knows it. Um, but anyway, they have a really cool double lane. And I'm yes. like, do you go in that? He goes, well, I did for a month. Uh, can I guess? Yeah, the tolls. $300. Seven hundred. Wow! <laughs> because I guess around Ulysses and stuff, that area, that's where it really yeah. gets. And that's like what we were talking about the other day with like variable, variable rate pricing, like with right. parking and stuff like that. I've it'll been be on like there... eight bucks in a for a two mile stretch or something. It'll be eight bucks for two miles, but it'll be twenty for the whole stretch. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I've I've definitely experienced this before. I, I've told you that story. I was late for a TCU coaches show in downtown Fort Worth, and I had to go. Uh, out of Fort Worth and then back in on the tolls, and I, I think I paid eighty bucks because it was one day. Yeah, because it was rush hour and I needed to get there, and it said popped up nineteen bucks to get to eight twenty. I don't care. I gotta go. Damn. And it really cost me. I think I, I used my whole check for the show on tolls. <laughs> <laughs> so part of this uh, 
just to wrap this one up, part of this uh, situation that they're doing with the HOV line, on, uh, HOV lanes on 75 is they're going to get rid of those uh, barriers. Aw. Those are fun to knock down when they first put them up. Well, that's why they're getting rid of them. <laughs> because they realize everyone just runs them over. That was a fun game where you're trying to time. Because, like, you know, they're like 40% there. Yeah. And yeah, then, so you got to squeeze in and out of one. Yeah, yeah, and then the other 60%, maybe 20% are still fully, you know, erect. But the other ones are like broken in half. Yeah, I've, se- I've definitely seen somebody hit one of those that was higher than they thought it was. Yeah, and then it drags on their <laughs> undercarriage, and yeah. it sounds horrible. But, yeah, just trying to weave in and out of that. It was always kind of fun. Somebody, like, in city planning or civil engineering was like, this will work. <laughs> this will scare people it, away. It took, like, 10 years <laughs> before they're like, they're all fucked up. So you say <laughs> a $60 million thing now, and it's going to take years? And to so just people remove be, them? Well, I'm just saying people will be bitching about, you know, the expansion or whatever, and by the time they get it done... They'll probably need more. They're going to do away with them. What do you mean? Like, they're going to... Uh, I think they're going to... Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the specifics of the project, but I think they're going to add, like, more space, and they're not They're not doing the barrier thing anymore. Okay, but there's going to be HOV lanes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but more expansive, and they're, they're giving up on the idea that anybody is actually... Uh, you know the best HOV is 635, Deterred man. by those... Oh, it feels like you're in space. That tunnel is the best thing. Yeah. You can haul so much ass under there. <laughs> I mean, and seriously, they if were you're taking not... radar this morning. Down there? It, with a laser. Did you see it? Yeah. Oh, that's not good news. Yeah. I never saw it. Are you like, that. Oh, we're paying for this? I'm paying for this road. I should that's, be able to do what I yeah, want. Yeah. The well, one problem with that, I will tell you, though, is uh, if you miss your exit, <laughs> <laughs> then you have to. That is a You're problem. going seven exits beyond your exit? Yeah. yeah. I think I almost missed a movie that I should have been there an hour early for one time. Yeah. You're like, okay, I guess now I'm driving to Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's your news. The Dumb Zone Pretty good. New His hat still light. cracks me up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> He's killing it. I don't know what that the font is called, but it should be called French. Today it just looks very French. I agree. I agree. Hmm. I'm just surprised he kept it on this whole time. I know, he, he normally just off. rips it off. Yeah. It's Tuesday, March 5th, as we all know. Mm-hmm. He's zooming in on your dick. So apparently this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, your birthday, Warren? Today is your it birthday? Is. It is. Me and Michael Irvin. Well, happy birthday and to you. Eva Mendez. How old are okay. you? Okay. 53. Damn, you How many great. can you name? Name uh, other famous people born There's on really, this day. That's kind of it, isn't it? I know. Well, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, he Michael got the playmaker. All right, I'll, I'll give you all of them in a second. First of all, on this day in 1770, mm-hmm. what happened? Isn't this the Boston Tea Party? No, that's not 1770. The Boston Massacre. Oh, just the same. Yeah, same thing. It's in mm-hmm. Boston. A bunch of British people are around. Yeah. Joe Garcia uh, I have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> British soldiers killed was, five people. It was a massacre. Kind of the first Kent State. <laughs> they fired into the As crowd. it is commonly referred to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who died on this day in 1982? Famous comedian. Belushi? Belushi. Damn, this guy's on top of it. I was a guess. On this day in 1984, I'll bet you don't know what Steve Young did. He signed with the USFL for a $40 million, 43-year contract. <laughs> It'll end in the year 2027. It's still out there today. It's coming up. Give it at the Rathman. And on this day in 1998, a big day for Jake, a NASA scientist said enough water was frozen in the loose soil of the moon to support a lunar base and perhaps one day... A human colony. One day, huh? <laughs> I swear to God, growing up, yeah. all I heard about was colonies on the moon. Of course. And we're no closer, are we? <laughs> no. I want a colony on the moon. <laughs> Why? And now we're having to fix barriers on the HOV lane because people keep running into it. Yeah. We're not ready for space life. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're not ever going to be. Oh, and this day in 1996. Was Don Nelson coach of the Mavs in 1996? No, that would have been 98, I want to say. That's when he first got here? Right. Yeah. Okay, well, this would make sense if Don Nelson was the coach, but the Mavs shot over 43 pointers for the fifth straight game, 
breaking the NBA record. It was the Mavs league record. They made 18 of them, uh, which also tied their league record. And I would just think, Don Nelson feels like I'm a head of the game type thing. I'm going to shoot tons of threes type of a guy. Who was the coach? Jim, Cle- uh, Jim Clemens. Huh. Well, F me. All right. Famous birthdays. It is funny, though, to look at those. Like, I know we talked about it with the Warriors the other day, but, like, every three-point record or offensive record that you see from 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago, you're like, that would be last. Today. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. No, I, I remember going through the 2011 bad radio audio, and Dan was complaining after one of the games because the Mavs shot 19 three-pointers. <laughs> Back them down. Too many threes, man. <laughs> Get in the paint. Well, that kind of criticism brought them a championship in 2011. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Michael Irvin, 58. You got nothing else for famous? I mean, that's literally it. Justin Fields is 25. Justin Fields <sighs> recently unfollowed the Bears on social media. Uh-oh. This is the world we live in now. Yeah, where but... Where that's a news story. <laughs> and he wants it to be. I know, but, like, Giannis did it. Jaden Hardy did it. Yeah. Jaden Hardy? Yeah. Like, during the uh, before the deadline. Yeah. <laughs> Do you still follow the ticket? Um, that would presume that I ever did. Oh, you don't follow the ticket on social? (laughs) I do. No, I think I do, but I definitely always had it muted. Joe Exotic is 61. Wow. President President of the convict section. Okay, you don't associate with that. Ricky Lindholm is 45. She is the blonde from Garfunkel and Oates. I just want to be clear that the only reason that I actually had the ticket muted was because I didn't want to see any of Blake's tweets. And sometimes he would tweet from the account. You probably had it muted way before I took over. I don't know. <laughs> I did it. I pushed it over the edge. <laughs> Who was the lady? Uh, it's from Garfunkel and Oates. You don't care. I, I think they're funny. Do you? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Women are funny. Get over Get it. Get over it. <laughs> uh, Eddie Grant is 76. He's uh, Electric Avenue. That was an era. Murray Head is 78. One night in Bangkok. That's right. Gordon. Penn Gillette is 69 from Penn and Teller. There was definitely a time where I thought they were pretty awesome. I saw them in Vegas. That's unsurprising to me. <laughs> it was either them or Carrot Top. Oof. Did the guy who doesn't talk talk after? Yeah, that bothered me. <laughs> like he met... He was, yeah, he was out in the gallery. Great. Yeah. yeah. I saw the worst show I've ever seen in my life in Vegas. It was Dice. Dice oh, let really? you down, huh? It was Dice 20 years after Dice was big. Like, this is probably 10 or 15 years ago, and it was just not good. That sucks. That makes me think that, like, is, do you think there's a chance that, like, when Trump is, like, 95, I'm going to see him and be like, damn, I remember the good days. Mm. Like, do you think he'll ever not be the funniest person to, ever to me? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no. I, I don't want to see Trump without a fastball. Like, I would rather him die in the next five years. Like, I, I never want to see him be unfunny. Dice, though, I mean. And Dice actually had a little bit of a, you know, a rebirth, right? He's a, he's like a true actor now. Yeah, wasn't he in like a Woody Allen movie or something? I think he was in, was he in Uncut Gems recently? Uh... I'm going to say no on that, but I did see him. Yeah, he's been in, in like, real couple, movies. couple movies. Yeah. Yeah, he was kind of on a comeback trail like five years ago or so. Still need to do that. Not come back, but. <laughs> like, let's go over the dice. The dice man cometh. I, I've, I've seen it probably three times in the past five years, and it's awesome. Like, we want to break it down, play audio, don't have to beep anything. Because, again, for me, everybody had always just told me this guy's like a joke. But like it was very clear to me when I watched it for the first time, I was like, "Oh, this is his. This is an act." Oh yeah. Like this is a bit. He's yeah. not actually like the Bob making fun of the hickory dickory it's, duck. Like no, it's kind of like um, <laughs> didn't Rush Limbaugh actually start out as like just a DJ, then a oh yeah, and like left leaning. I've seen interviews with Rush like when he was in his prime. He doesn't. He didn't talk like that at all. And then he just. 
took. It's like he formed a persona. Yeah, like Larry comes the on. Cable Guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, those are the comedian ones, but Rush did it. Larry the Cable Guy did it. He was just doing regular stand-up jokes. Yeah. About, uh, you know, airplane food and this and that. And then he discovered Larry the Cable Guy and, you know. Yeah. We need a bit. <laughs> yeah, we need a bit. <laughs> Kevin Conley is 50. The football coach? No, no, that's Kevin O'Connell. Kevin Conley <laughs> is from Entourage. Uh, that's right. Okay. Mm. E. E. I would not have placed E at 50. Mm-mm. Do you like Entourage? No. Oh, you're that one. I, I didn't. I knew there was something that you didn't. You weren't right about. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I've seen most of the episodes. That was a very I popular. I was a big fan. I know you were. <laughs> I loved it. I still love it. I might want to go back and do a rewatch. I wish you would. And then report <laughs> back to me. And we'll do a different. I'll do an episode every day. That like, sounds terrible. Geez. We'll we'll limit our show to two hours, <laughs> but forty five minutes of every show is going to be about last night's entourage that I watched. I don't even think it was a four. Okay, fine. <laughs> My yeah. report will be forty five. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um. So we have famous people born on your birthday, Warren. Mm-hmm. But they're not alive anymore. Mm. Andy Gibb. Legend. I'm glad that you're upset by that. I do love him. Yeah, there you go. Underappreciated. Thank you. Mm-hmm. See? Earl Woods. Oh, mm. man. Died on this day. We have Belushi. You know, you gotta say. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it's, tough to, it's tough to argue with the results. <laughs> Methodology. Yeah, yeah, it could have been a softer, but... <laughs> Died on this day, we have uh, Belushi. We have Joseph Stalin, who was not only a Joseph with an F, but he was uh, like a dictator and stuff. Many would say worse than Hitler. <laughs> that's, and, not, that's actually not a joke at all. I don't know why you found that. <laughs> it's so funny. That's like a historical well, fact. Well, I personally think Hitler's pretty bad, but if you want to diminish all that he did... <laughs> Uh, and died on this day in 2016. Ray Tomlinson says here, the inventor of email. Huh. Okay. I bet that there are a dozen people who have a claim to that. Don't you think? Not that it says on my sheet of paper right here. No, I know, but it's just kind of like what we talk about with like Tesla and Marcon. Like, there's no doubt that there are multiple people who were A couple people, out. same time. Like, yeah, hey, I sent a... Note via the internet. Al Gore. Well, without him, where would Hotmail be? <laughs> that's the thing. I think that's actually what he created. Yeah, well, that's probably over two hours. And well, that was Today in History. Definitely even with our little break, Blake. I think we're <laughs> over two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Are we close, though? I think we're like 205. Okay. Ish. We're getting there, dude. Okay. We are getting there. <laughs> I'll just and keep getting here later and later. <laughs> that gives us plenty of time <laughs> for closing remarks. Two more. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a part of the bit. <laughs> we all, we, I mean, you're the 690 guy, right? Or. or well, that's right. I am. Yeah. You, the promote, you can promote your today? business. You can do anything you want. This you is need your anything time. fixed on your house? Do you want to complain uh, about anything you see in the wild? Do you want to uh, give an opinion on the the den here? What did you think it would be like? How is it compared? There is more stuff up here than I thought there would be. The dog was insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying the that out loud. The most insufferable pet I have ever been around. <laughs> um, let's see. You've hurt Dan's feelings. Blake was very nice. Thank you. I was worried about you, Dan, but you performed well. What does that mean? And he has nothing for me. You seem you seem like uh, in clearly you're thoughtful. The dick. I was going. I was the trajectory was that direction, but you. I think once you warm up to us, I don't know. You you're, you. I feel like it was once he put the beret on. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it, you that surpassed. Yeah, 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 and just yeah, and then Jake is Jake. And I mean, that in that's a good pretty way. much all yeah. anybody's ever said about me. Just kick ass, cool dude. Yeah, he's just. <laughs> yeah, he bleeds. He bleeds. Yeah. Jake is Jake. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. We appreciate you guys. 
This has got to be a whip, right? Having people just come in here and Not at all. Not at actually, all. I, I like this it is, quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're just... This is actually all... I like it a lot. I, I do, too. too. Yeah. Because in the ticket, when we would listen, y'all would... Um, like, if someone bumped up against it, it, y'all didn't like that. But here, y'all seemed like I yawned a couple of times or I... Whatever. You did, you, you did, it didn't bug you. Yeah. No, we're... I, we need friends. I enjoy it very much. <laughs> Badly. When, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Y'all are very welcoming. So whoever wants to do this in the future know that it's a... Uh... 690 for the beer at the show? Absolutely, because well, we absolutely. have a lot of leftover beer from all the... <laughs> you don't even drink. Well, we're going to drink the wine that brought Warren the brought. Yeah. Yeah, you should drink the wine. There's a white one. It's not cold. But that's all I got. I'm belaboring the two minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. into two hours. Big word. <laughs> I'm, I'm making it go even longer. Okay. Well, again, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Adios, mofo.